Good evening, everybody. My name is Fran DeYoung. I'm the Vice Chair. I would like to welcome everyone to this evening's meeting of the Planning Board, uh, April 8th. Yep. April 8th. Is it sound going? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, the chairman is here today, but she's uh, been working nonstop for the last 48 hours. Um, so she's asked me to kind of uh, intervene here. Um, we have a pretty full agenda this evening. Um, we'll start off the public hearing at 76 Main Street in a second, but I did also want to make a note that we do have a new principal planner. I can introduce him to you. Uh, Elaine, please do. I'd like to introduce John Gelsich, um, the new principal planner for the town. Welcome. So I'd, like, so I'd like to introduce John Gelsich, who will be our, uh, well, he's graciously accepted the position of principal planner, and he'll be starting on April 16th. So I wanted to introduce him to you tonight. <laughs> And uh, just wanted to say a few things. Uh, John has worked in the last four years for Beals and Thomas as senior planner, uh, has some municipal, municipal experience with the city of Chelsea, and is a certified planner and has lots of experience that we're very excited to have on board here. So, excellent, great. We're happy to have John. A couple words, anything you like to say? Uh, yeah, I'm excited to get started. I look forward to working with all of you, and hopefully, we can do some good things here. Awesome. Well, welcome. I'll be happy to tell you more. And I want to thank Muriel for participating in the interview process. Yes, thank you. I um, I was really lucky to be able to participate in the whole um, interview hiring process, and uh, very impressed with John. And looking forward to uh, working with him. And uh, I made sure he knew that you were all a collegial, energetic, invested group of folks, and he would be safe here with us. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> well, welcome aboard. Look forward to it. Thanks, John. Thanks, Muriel. Thanks, Elaine. We don't feel like you have to stay. <laughs> All right, now let's bring up the uh, applicant, our public hearing for 76 Main Street. Um, site plan review and special permit flexible community development for REC Hopkinton LLC. Uh, I'll make a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. Second. second. All right, so move and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? <coughs> All right, uh, we have in front of us uh, REC Hopkinton. This is a major project site review, uh, and I'll walk through a little bit of what the process is going to look like, and I'll turn it over to the applicant who can provide an overview as well. Um, this is for, as I mentioned, a site plan review and a special permit flexible community development for our, our, uh, REC Hopkinton. Uh, there's two concurrent public hearings being held uh, on the application as described uh, here below in a second. Um, the decision is due in 90 days uh, for each, uh, at the close of the public hearing on each application. So the first application is for a site plan review pursuant to zoning bylaw, uh, Article 20, proposing of a 43,541 square foot mixed use development consisting of one three story building with 14,400 square feet of non residential space on the first floor and 26 residential units on the second and third floors in 67 parking spaces with associated stormwater management facilities. Um, a majority vote is required for approval on the site plan review. Uh, and the second public hearing, again, which is running concurrently, is for a flexible community development bylaw special permit pursuant to Article 11, which is two affordable units within the 26 units as required by the FCD bylaw. Uh, and two-thirds vote required for approval on that as well. Um, so with the public hearing like this, with the, with the review, there is a public hearing outline that we're going to follow. Uh, it consists of a number of different elements uh, within that, and you can follow along in, a, uh, in the packet as well. Um, the first thing that we'll do is we'll allow the applicant uh, to provide a project overview and a review of the project itself. And then we'll get into staff uh, reports and consultant reviews and then go down the list. Right. Um, any questions from board members before I turn it over to the applicant to provide an overview? Right. And again, this is the first opportunity. The public will have numerous opportunities themselves to weigh in with comment. Uh, Mr. Mastroianni. 
Yeah. Hi, Kathy Sherry from REC Hopkinton. I'm here tonight with Paul Mastriani, the property owner and applicant, as well as some members of the project team. We have John Cusick from Bowler Engineering, our architect Lou Labeo, and then our traffic consultant Robert Michaud from MDM. So they'll all have the opportunity to give you a brief overview and or answer questions and such. So um, as was provided, we've submitted a review for a site plan for a new mixed-use building to be located at 76 Main Street. So the proposed project would involve taking down the two existing commercial buildings that are there on the property now and constructing a new three-story building, first floor being commercial, a combination of office, retail, and um, restaurant, and the second and third stories containing um, uh, a total of 26 one- and two-bedroom rental units. So at a real high level, our vision for this development was to bring to the downtown business district a combination of people and services in a village-style mix of commercial and multifamily housing. So the commercial aspect of the project would provide a number of new services and amenities to the downtown area as well as to the residents of Hopkinton. The residential aspect of the project would provide additional housing opportunities and choices and also increase some more affordable housing housing choices in town. We envision the residential units as more of a location for young professionals as well as individuals and couples that are downsizing that want to live in that kind of downtown suburban area where they can walk to restaurants, walk to the post office, walk to the pharmacy, um, or maybe even walk or bike to their um, job up on South Street or somewhere in town. We're not necessarily envisioning that the development is appealing to families, as we're not out offering, as you can see from the site plan, a lot of the outdoor space, the play space, et cetera, um, that a lot of the other apartment communities in town are offering. In addition, our square footage is a little bit smaller than the other apartment communities, which would really more lend itself more toward singles, roommates, couples, or, or downsizing empty nesters. So we did truly see this project as enhancing the vitality of the downtown as we believe is intended by the zoning bylaws that allow this type of development in the downtown business district. So we were very cognizant of the local bylaws and adhered to those while developing the site plan. We're not asking for any waivers or variances. What we're proposing we believe is by right. So with that said, I'm going to turn it over to John Cusick just to give you a real high level <coughs> overview of the the site. Good evening, everybody. Uh, for the record, John Cusick with Bowler Engineering. Uh, the site plan here is oriented toward the north is facing to the, uh, to the left. East is up and west is, is down. Uh, you're all familiar with the, with the existing site. It is 76 Main Street. Uh, it is opposite the police station, across the street from the, from the fire station. It's about 1.2 acres in size, um, and it is in the downtown uh, business zone. What we are proposing, as was uh, discussed, is a mixed-use development. The first floor will contain uh, the retail uh, restaurant uh, in office, and then residential up, up above. Access to the site is through a single driveway located Right here, as you enter the site, you'll have parking spaces on either side, or as you come around the corner as well, there is additional parking. Uh, there are 69 parking spaces total that service the, um, service the site. We have provided uh, accessible walkways on three sides of the building. There's also an outdoor seating area located there, and access to the street uh, in that location. It's a dedicated loading space located here for some of the deliveries. We also have a bike rack located there. Grading and drainage on the site, it's, uh, the site generally slopes in this direction, high from the street, generally coming back here. It's about 11 feet or so of, um, of grade differential. Based on that, we situated the building in this location on the, on the site, so we could work the parking lot down to mimic the existing grading scenarios on site. The stormwater is fully compliant with local and state uh, requirements and actually uh, exceeds uh, some of those uh, levels. And again, it has been fully reviewed uh, by your peer review consultant. I don't believe there's any outstanding issues with, um, with that. 
utilities are available right in uh, right in Main Street. It's pretty simple. We're just going to reconnect to those. Uh, we provided a lighting plan on the property. Again, the lighting is fully compliant with the, uh, with the town's bylaws. Everything is downward facing, fully enclosed, uh, no higher than 15 foot light poles. Uh, again, fully compliant and no spread over the property lines. Uh, landscaping, as you can see on the property, we wanted to really um, really add a, a statement with the landscaping. Uh, as you can see, we're pretty densely land landscaped on all the perimeters of the, uh, of the property. We have a mixture of 38 shade and evergreen trees, 130 deciduous and evergreen shrubs, uh, and a mixture of ground cover, uh, perennials, and ornamental grasses. Traffic, uh, we've provided a, uh, a memo on the traffic as part of your, uh, your application. Uh, it is a very low uh, traffic generator. Uh, again, that was fully peer reviewed by your peer review consultant. You can speak to that, but there's no real outstanding issues that, um, that we're aware of. Um, and then architecture. We met early on uh, with a bunch of folks in the, uh, from the staff, We've addressed all of those comments and included them. We went to the DRB, uh, whatever building uh, comments we can uh, incorporate, we have done that. So the plan that has been submitted has gone through one round of um, comments, plus the initial comments that we heard early on at the staff level meetings. So we believe we've addressed um, what we've heard. Uh, to that end, I'd like to turn it over to Lou, who can go over any um, more details on the building and architecture, and I can come back to answer any site-related questions you might have. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Most of the Bayo Platform Space Architecture. Uh, I think John summarized at, at a high level what's going on in the building, so I'll go directly to some of the exterior features. Uh, materi building materials or traditional materials, uh, lap siding for the most part, brick base with a, with a cast stone uh, wainscot type cap, uh, nickel gap siding, which is also a traditional painted material, and uh, at a couple of detail areas we have some uh, wood veneer, clear wood veneer um, metal paneling that, that looks like, like natural wood. Uh, as John mentioned, uh, the lighting was was uh, applied to the building in such a way to minimize light fall off onto any adjacent, uh, uh, minimize light fall off in general and no light fall off into any of the adjacent properties. Uh, parapets, about four feet high, can seal all the mechanical systems in the, in the roof. And um, one of the, responding to some of the comments we had from the design review board, uh, they had some concerns with some of the brick colors we had, so we've gone back and made the brick into a traditional red brick, uh, limestone colored wains uh, wainscot cap on the outside, uh, reduced some of the bluer areas into a more neutral palette, and uh, added some additional trim to the front to replicate some of what's on the existing building. Uh, the light patterns on the windows are two over two, which are the same as the existing building. And um, the, light fixture. Uh, the light fixture was changed to something to be uh, less contemporary than was there before. That about summarizes the exterior. Uh, apartment units, 26 units as has been described, a uh, mix of uh, one bedrooms, one bedrooms with studios and two bedroom units. Mm -hmm. Pretty good mix throughout the, the building. We'll have two handicap accessible units and two affordable units as, you already, as you've already described. Thank you. I'll turn it over to Scott for the uh, traffic tip. So one question before you, sure. you, 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 you bug out. Um, the design review board made some comments and you said you were, did you incorporate all those design review board comments in there or are there still, some still outstanding? We incorporated uh, the majority of their comments. There were some uh, uh, I think the one question that, that we didn't incorporate was the potential reuse of the existing building. We don't think that that's a feasible alternative. Uh, so that one we did not incorporate. Um, I think that is the, the single major issue. But they also had some uh, question about glass that went all the way down to the ground. There's only one location on the front where the glass goes down. We think it's important because it's the entry to the restaurant. We think that's more inviting. In most other places, the, the glass goes down to a brick shelf. And then along the back area, far from the street, we also have some glass that goes to the ground. I think we're going to do it really want to incorporate into the, uh, into the design changes. Okay, just one question about the architecture. Um, can you just describe the first floor a little bit? Is that a walkway with a roof over it? 
That is a walkway. It's not a roof over it, but there are awnings. So we have places where uh, it's easier to see on the floor plans, but where there's some cantilevers. So there's a small cantilever up front here, and there's a larger cantilever when we get way towards the back. And then there's a canopy that uh, emphasizes the uh, residential entry, so that it's clear with the residential entry. But the rest of it is uh, our traditional fabric awnings. Thank you. Would you like a traffic overview at this point, or just to oh, a, oh, yes. an overview, yes? It's very high, yeah. Okay, you're up. <laughs> uh, for the record, Robert Michel, principal with MD Transportation Consultants based in Marlboro, Massachusetts. Um, we were engaged to do a customary traffic impact and access study, and the nature of that study was to look at the downtown signal, uh, which is slated for improvements by DOT, as well as, as, well as the portion of Main Street from uh, the downtown signal to where the site driveway is to be located, uh, shown in red, red dots. Uh, the project uh, was characterized in terms of trip generation uh, using industry standard methods uh, for each of the individual uses, office, retail, restaurant, and residential. Uh, the net sum of trips uh, is between 20 and 30 peak directional trips during commuter hours, uh, which is slightly higher on Saturday, at around 35 uh, vehicles per hour. So this is uh, a low impact type project. When you look at the distribution of those trips onto the downtown signal and the driveway locations, you'll see that the net increases in trips relative to a no-build condition are rather modest. Uh, for instance, to the east on Main Street, about five trips per hour. Cedar Street to the north, two trips per hour. Negligible on Grove Street and about 15 trips per hour to the west on Main Street. So those levels of trip increase uh, really fall within the day-to-day -day normal fluctuation in traffic in the downtown area. So just, just, uh, just on that point, just to clarify for me, when you say 15, is that the net difference increase in terms Correct. of what it is today? Correct. All right, per hour. Per hour, right. And these are peak hours. So in this example, this is a weekday morning peak hour, 15 additional total two-way trips would be generated to or from the west, right, toward the 495 quarter. On a Saturday, uh, we, I'm sorry, weekday evening peak hour, uh, that is about 35 from that direction of about one new trip every other minute, every two minutes. So those are the relative trip increases relative to what you'd see today. Okay. Um, yeah, there's another question, Gary. Yes. Sorry. Um, I, I know the first floor is planned for a combination of retail, restaurant, and office, and I'm wondering what assumptions you used based on a percentage of usage on that first floor to determine your, your traffic estimates. Sure, that's a good question. We actually apply some very specific square footage uh, ratios. So in the, in the case of um, the retail component, we apply um, the retail trip generation rate to just over 7,000 square feet of building space. Uh, we have a high turnover sit-down restaurant applied to 40 seats. Uh, and then we have the, the multifamily residential course uh, based on its own uh, characteristics of 26 units. Uh, so that, that, that's how we arrived at these particular numbers. Uh, I'll point out that we anticipate that there will be some synergy between these uses. As Kathy mentioned earlier, uh, folks who choose to live in this kind of environment do so for a reason. They, they like to get out of their cars and be able to walk to a restaurant or a shopping opportunity. Uh, and those um, <coughs> result in a reduction in trips relative to a standalone typical suburban standard. We have not credited these trips for that characteristic. In other words, we're treating each one of these uses as if it were a standalone use with no relationship one to the other, no reduction in trips because you live there and want to walk to the restaurant. So we believe that these estimates, if anything, are a slightly conservative representation of what is likely to happen here. So, so just out of curiosity, which of those uses produces the most traffic based on your Square foot adjustments. It's based on time of day. So obviously a restaurant wouldn't be generating um, as much traffic in the morning as it would uh, later at night, for instance. Uh, and the residential wouldn't really be generating much in the middle of the day, but would be generating more during, during the traditional peak hours. So if you follow this table, 
and you look at a weekday morning uh, situation, uh, the number of entering vehicles uh, for restaurant use, assuming that it did have morning hours, would be the highest generating use at about 10 inbound trips over the course of an hour. That would be something along the kin of a, you know, sort of maybe a breakfast type of place or something like that. Uh, whereas the residential is only three trips uh, and seven exiting right, of the 26 total units. Uh, you see they're all relatively uh, minor. The retail is, is very minimal, about three to four inbound or outbound trips per hour. The office component, uh, all entering, no exiting. So, so just to clarify, I want to make sure I'm reading this right. You're saying that during peak weekday traffic, those 26 residential units are only going to generate three entering trips per hour? Entering in the morning, correct. Most trips for residential. And exiting is seven. Correct. So what are the other 50 people that live there doing during the day? Well, I can tell you that um, this represents a peak hour, one hour period. Most trips for residential use are generated over about a three to four hour period of time in the morning. Uh, so you can get much closer to the number of units and the, and the actual trips exiting by looking at the total period in which those trips would be actually made. Uh, not everyone who owns a car would necessarily be using it uh, during those hours of the day. Uh, folks who choose to live here may work later hours and may work flex time. They may not own a car. Uh, and uh, we see that these trends, which are based on national trends, are actually quite accurate and have been reflected in a very recently updated uh, catalog of land uses that's published by the Institute of Transportation Engineers. So, uh, we know empirically, having studied and, and built and measured the performance of projects like this, small and large, that those national standards based on the very current um, uh, rates is very accurate. Uh, so, so we're confident that for that number of units, for a one hour period in the morning, we generate on the order of about seven. In, in a town that doesn't have much access to public transportation and absolutely. other things, you're telling me that's absolutely. not? Absolutely. We've got measured performance standards for Okay. Communities that have actually a much more suburban feel than what's okay. here. Yeah. That's I would, that's good questions. Yeah, uh, we'll get into a lot of details. I have some questions on that too. I just want to get through the. Right. I just yep. have one uh, global question. You reference the um, improvements that are going to be made yes. <clears throat> uh, coming forward, um, and that closest <coughs> major intersection um, is going to experience some improvements, but I just want to state for the record they're kind of minor as far, as far as traffic flow. It takes a terrible intersection to slightly less terrible. <laughs> um, and that, um, that area, whether you have a minor impact or not, that is a very tough area anyway, particularly with the emergency services on both sides of exactly that spot. Sure. Mm -hmm. So I just want to be mindful of that. Yes, yeah, yeah, so we were careful to consider these improvements. This is actually uh, from the 25% design plans that were submitted to the state that indicate the nature of those improvements. You'll see that uh, during the permitting phase of the CVS, there was some land that was uh, set aside for the eventual realignment of Grove Street and Cedar Street so that the alignment could be far more uh, traditional than it currently is, less offset. Uh, you'll also notice that a, a big emphasis on this improvement plan is pedestrian accommodation, bicycle accommodation. You'll see enhanced sidewalk elements, uh, enhanced crosswalk, uh, a multi-use path that runs along the side, south side of the road. Um, so in the planning of this property, we were careful to consider what is being contemplated in these improvements and we're tying the project into that. Uh, one of the recommendations that we've developed from that is to re relocate the existing crosswalk, uh, which today centers on the fire station, and to push it slightly to the west so that it has a more coherent uh, uh, location and alignment. And that's shown, um, this, this is actually what was proposed on the 25% design. This is the fire station, the two driveways under this design would actually flank that crossing. Um, the the idea uh, in the recommended alignment is to take that and slide it to the west so that it's just beyond where the fire station is. There's less conflict. It results in a, in a more coherent design of how the access ramp system needs to work. Uh, if it were to remain where the fire station is today, you've got a strange collaboration of ramps and you're crossing two very wide driveways. 
So that was the principal outcome of that, and that's something that this applicant uh, is willing to continue a discussion on with uh, MassDOT. Um, that facilitates uh, where the driveway is to be located for the project, which itself would, would be tied in with that project, uh, all ADA compliant. Um, from an impact perspective, we did look at the operations of the downtown signal. Uh, the number of trips that we, uh, can I, I'm sorry, can I make a point before we get too, too far away from what you just said? Through the chair, Frank? Yes, through the chair. Sure. Um, the reason that that sidewalk is there is because there's a pre-existing business that's been there for 30, 40 years, and it's very important that people that are, are walking to that business be able to cross the street in the shortest distance from downtown. So um, moving sidewalks, adding sidewalks, it's all up in the air, but there, there's certain reasons why things are in place, and um, just maybe talk to the business that's there and see what their feelings are, because I'm sure that'll be a major issue if that uh, sidewalk does get moved. To, to the chair, I just wanted to point out that this is supposed to be a high-level discussion, so I think we've got a good feel of the high-level discussion, and we do have a outline, and you guys are up first, so we can yeah, we can have all those we're detailed come back to conversations. I think it was important enough to mention that there there are reasons that there's a sidewalk there. It, it will I mean, give, him, it will give him the opportunity to think about it in the yes. next ten minutes yeah. to come back with a good response. Right. And I just want to be clear that what you're suggesting is the crosswalk location as opposed to the sidewalk, correct? Yes. yes. We're talking about okay. okay. Um, finally, uh, we did look at the circulation um, aspects of the property, and we've uh, modeled the largest responding vehicle that could be on the site, uh, ladder truck, and, and have confirmed that there is adequate maneuverability within the site uh, and at the driveway to accommodate those vehicle types. There's a specific comment about the peer reviewer. And in, in conclusion, uh, peer reviewer did issue a series of comments. We've addressed those comments. We don't believe that there are any outstanding issues at this point. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> any other any other team members that uh, you've no, got to? That's it from our present? perspective. Very good. Elaine, <coughs> staff reports. Before I start, could someone pass the iPad and Frank's nameplate down to so <laughs> 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 get Frank set up? Team building exercise. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm just referring to the items in my memo that I noticed that I noted on the page stop on the top of page two. Uh, first of all, with regard to the use, um, the town's zoning indicates that mixed use buildings have to have retail space on the first floor, an office or residential above. And uh, this one is proposed to have office on the first floor, so I don't think that that would be a permitted use. And so I think that the parking and so forth, the traffic calculation should be based on the retail and restaurant on the first floor. So someone could probably have office as an accessory use to retail, say a small office or for a restaurant, but it can't be used as the primary use. On the first floor. On the first floor. Um, so that was the, the first point I wanted to make. Um, so that basically it involves doing the calculations again. I was gonna say, do we know what impact that is at a high level in terms of the calculations? They have not done it. Yes, we can answer that if we need to. Uh, the second item is um, based on the fact that the zoning indicates that the residential dwelling units shall have dedicated on-site parking spaces. And I think this means that the parking spaces need to somehow be reserved for the residential uses at some point, and maybe that's not an all-day space, but some reservation for spaces. So as we try to interpret what that means, I think there has to be some dedication of spaces for the residential uses. The bylaw's not specific, but it's obvious that something was contemplated there. So something to be Any considered. thoughts on that, initial thoughts, or...? I mean, we, we are going to, it's not like going to designate all day, but <clears throat> we will have, I think we need 40, 40 spaces for the residential. So what we'll probably do something is, you know, from, you know, 6 o'clock till, you know, 6 o'clock in the morning will be designated just for residential. So they'll obviously have their own spaces, you know, when they actually, when they're, you know, gone during the day, obviously if there's a restaurant, there's a bank, whoever's in there, they could use those spaces. So it's not like we're going to go designate them all day and then only keep, you know, 27 spaces or 29 spaces available. 
So we'd have signage at we'd the have, designated spaces specifying that it's reserved for tenant unit number potentially as well as the time frame as Paul mentioned. All right. To the chair, Elaine, is that something we've done in town before? We have not had that come up before. No. Hmm. And the third item was uh, the fact that the zoning bylaw requires that the outdoor seating for restaurants need to be included in the, in the parking <coughs> calculation and the materials <coughs> that they have not included the outdoor seating. So if there's outdoor seating contemplated for restaurants, those have to be included in the parking calculation. Me three. So uh, we can submit formally uh, the new calculations for parking based on um, incorporating all retail, not the office, because the retail has a higher parking count, as well as either eliminating or limiting the outdoor seating and including that in. Um, in all the different scenarios, and we will submit this, we do still meet the number of spaces that we have available, which is the 69 on the Cool. Lane, anything else? Oh, that's it. Uh, should I do beta next? Everything and then we'll else do is, the... is beta. Mm -hmm. All right. Paradise, come on up. You sure? You want me to get up? No. You sure? So, uh, um, thanks for welcoming me back. I haven't seen you guys in a while. Uh, my name is Phil Paradis with Beta Group. We've been asked to peer review this project on uh, behalf of the town. Local residents. Um, so, uh, just a quick overview. Uh, we've had a few. Uh, we uh, reviewed the, the first submission, had a, a number of comments, um, and then subsequent they provided revised and supplemental documents in which we, uh, which they uh, attempted to address uh, the majority of our comments. Um, and so we've had a chance to look at them as well and issue a, a second letter. Um, so there's a, there's a few things that uh, kind of unique things about this project that we, uh, we just want to point out in my letter. Uh, in Z1, we recommend that uh, there be a deed restriction on the, um, on the units so that uh, none of the studies can be converted to, to bedrooms and therefore uh, increase the population. So they have a, a unique uh, turnaround feature for the for the emergency vehicles um, and we just want to make sure that the uh, the fire department is okay with that um, they are having uh, we just uh, as, as with all our projects we want to make sure that DPW is satisfied that there is sufficient water and, and sewer service uh, in Main Street for this um, the uh, we we're going to defer to the um, uh, design review board for the the screening, they, they have provided quite a bit of screening and fencing, um, and uh, we just refer to them. Uh, loading situation is a little unique uh, in that uh, the dedicated loading space is across the driveway from the, uh, from the retail space and building, uh, and so that's going to have to be coordinated just to make sure that obviously it's safe to do that and that you're not going to prevent access from the uh, uh, access to through the site while there's loading operations going on. So I'd, I'd like to see a little bit more information probably about what, how active we see that and what kind of the operation hours and, and such for, for loading. Um, so uh, another issue, uh, many of the, we concur with many of the traffic uh, comments that were uh, addressed. Um, it's not the, the although it's going to be a change in, in this particular lot. Um, the, the number of trips in the street is is sufficient that there's not going to be likely a, a huge impact uh, on the peak hour. Um, as you were discussing, I was thinking about my own household. I have five people living in my house, and none of us leave. None of us use the peak hour. Uh, either either in the morning or in the evenings uh, because you want to avoid the traffic so uh, but anyway in this particular case uh, there's a unique situation where two driveways are fairly close to each other the, the uh, police driveway and uh, and the access driveway so we just want to uh, get, get some input from 
uh, the police department if, if that's uh, if they consider that safe, um, and and if there's any issues there. Um, the they are proposing a drainage connection to the drainage system in, in, in Clap, Clap, how do you say that? Clapham. Clapham way. Clapham place. <laughs> Um, and they have provided the calculations. The, the question I had, uh, just uh, actually looking it over today, was just permission. You know, do you have rights to connect to that? Uh, and, and probably just, we probably want some evidence that you have uh, the ability to connect there and, and, and impact that road, what their requirements would be. Do, just on that point, do you have permission to be able to connect? Again, that's not the ball. I don't. I mean, isn't, I mean, the, current, the, isn't the current sewer. connected? The, the water the is currently getting there today. Um, it's just going <laughs> overland to the to the catch basins. Okay. We're just connected in by a by a hard pipe. Okay. Uh, so that'll just be a follow up for the next. I think just doing work on the property too. So I think I think that's going to be it. Uh, to be revisited. To the chair. Excuse me, Phil. Is that noted as one of the SWs? So um, it's part of SW one. I, I really didn't emphasize the permission part of that okay. uh, on that, nice. that second um, because I just thought of it uh, uh, preparing for tonight. Um, so, and then uh, a typical for uh, infiltration systems, uh, we'd want your <coughs> you to have uh, some eyes on it before while it's being dug because the infiltration system is the primary um, uh, system for mitigating the, the stormwater runoff from the site. Um, and I did want to emphasize the, uh, the question about parking uh, relative to the outdoor seating. Um, so those are the, the basic comments at this point. I have one follow-up question on the traffic flow. Coming out, if you wanted to turn east onto 135, Yep. Had that been reviewed? Because like, right now there's only one entrance and one exit, correct? If you're driving in, basically. Mm -hmm. coming. Um, just if you're trying to make that left during peak hours, coming out only, I know this because I go to Sovereign Bank, and if I'm trying to get out of there at 5 o'clock, it's tricky. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't know if that had been part of any review from either you or the traffic engineer. Um, I don't have the numbers in my head. We'll talk about that. I just want yeah. to ask Bill. We'll talk about it because the they asked. The, that was a subject of peer review, and we did respond. And if you'd like, I can re rehash. Time will come up. We'll get there. We'll, we'll get there. Can we do something other yeah. yeah. well. Any other questions for Bill from the board members? I did. Yep. There's some, <coughs> some comments about exceeding the maximum coverage of impervious surface. Have those been resolved? It, Say that again? Uh, about exceeding the amount of impervious surface. There were some comments in your letter, I think. Uh, we, uh, can you? See, it's, it says it's Article 12, article 12 Water Resources yeah. Protection Overlay District. 76%. Yeah. Yeah, it's in your letter dated March 19th, page 2 of 10, Amy's point, Article 11, Water Resource Protection Overlay District. Oh, and it talks about the existing, the current impervious surface area of 37 percent and the proposed area of 70 i mean sorry 37 going to 77. Um, so yeah so the, the existing site already exceeds that threshold and the, that that uh, our, uh, that section requires that you provide an infiltration system to mitigate okay. so that's Thank what you. they've done that. And, and so i think i think their design would meet it provided okay Do the chair, I have one more question for Phil. Yep. I know we looked at emergency vehicles and how they turn around. I'm just curious, and we can talk about this later, but did you look at how regular vehicles and delivery trucks turn around in the parking lot? So they provided a uh, auto turns to, uh, to, turn, to turn, turn the emergency vehicles around. I know the emergency vehicles, but I was just curious if you looked at non-emergency vehicles, because an emergency vehicle can, I just, Curious for other vehicles. This is the largest vehicle type that would actually be making that movement. So the box trucks and the standard delivery types would be about half the size. 
and would, would be required to do the same backing maneuver. And that's a T-type three-point turn, and there's a specific area of the site that will accommodate that's specifically designed for that purpose. Through the chair, I have some more questions about that too, but let's do it. Yeah, but when we get there. The yeah, so there's a couple of the traffic's the first <laughs> that we're going to get after here. Any other questions for? So, uh, so I, I just wanted to point yeah. out the, the only concern we have is that making sure that truck drivers know they can do that. So, um, you know, I, obviously the fire department, if, if they've got approval, they would mm -hmm. they would know that. But, but just allowing, I don't know if there's going to be signage. To make sure There'll be some signage. Be signage. I just had one follow-up question on the trucks. Um, a trash removal truck, the dumpsters all the way at the back, will they be backing in the entire way? No. No? Go ahead. Yeah. No. So the, the way this is designed uh, through the chair is, is uh, to have a front-loading unit so that the truck would actually front-load and then reverse direction in that same pattern. Mid-morning, right? Not at 7 a.m.? <laughs> not, not at peak hours. Actually, I, I have that as a, one of the things to talk about. No. I also just want to, if I could, Fran, yes, um, throw out just the concept that we routinely um, experience more kids than we think we're going to. And it's just a top-level comment as we go forward uh, discussing this project. It just, Hopkinton just doesn't, doesn't comply with any formulas that anybody has kind of mm -hmm. come up with or shared with us. Um, and we need to be mindful of what that means. Um, for the school department, for, you know, responders, everything. Where's the school bus going? I think that's a fair point. Uh, it's oh, kind of deep, that dovetails into additional items for discussion. So um, if there's nothing else for Phil, I uh, voted number four on the public hearing outline. And this is where members of the planning board, as well as members of the public, will have the opportunity to come forth and add any items to the agenda or the discussion uh, agenda that aren't currently listed. Uh, there's a number A through J, actually gets deeper than that, but things like vehicular and pedestrian traffic, stormwater management, site lighting, building design and landscape, utilities, off street parking, signage, emergency vehicle access, affordable housing, and town department boards, committees, comments that are not covered up above. Um, so that's kind of the general framework that we have right now. But uh, this is an opportunity for the public to come forth with their thoughts as well as members of the board to identify anything else that they wanted to add on here as well. So I'll first ask members of the board, and then I'll ask members of the public if they want to come forward and add anything to the agenda or any of the comments. Through the chair, just before we get started on that, yes. just a friendly reminder to everybody that this is just adding items. We're not discussing items. We'll have a section for that. So. We stay focused, we'll get through it quicker. Each section will have time for public comment as well. So, good call. So, I think to the chair to add to the list um, snow removal. Good call. On story. Sidewalks. I think this one probably wants solar panels. Second. <laughs> Is there a bike rack? That's <laughs> no, it. Yeah, I know. All right, anything else from members of the planning board? Uh, historic structures. Historic structures. Just to clarify, we call out off street parking, but are we. I was going to add on street, street parking. I want to put on, on, okay. on, I have that there. Yeah. So we'll, we'll make a note of that as well. Uh, anybody, so board members, you guys good? So just do we want to combine H with A and have one conversation about traffic flow? Uh, I'll allow it. Mm -hmm. Just something to consider. Sure. Most of it. No sense of uh, bringing people up to us if they don't need to. One additional point that I don't think is here is on the intended usage, given that uh, per Lane's memo, does deviate a little bit from what's allowed in mixed use. We should probably discuss the, that the as well. retail. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Small business or business usage. Yes. That, um, office on the first floor, I think, is the office <coughs> technical <coughs> term. <clears throat> right. Mr. Chair, uh, could we add the discussion about deed restrictions uh, from the town's perspective, what we can do in our, with, from our bylaws? Um, and that would also hopefully cover Muriel's concern about 
too many children and resources. I just want to be clear, I love children. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we can have a child catcher, too. I don't, I don't think you can date restrict children. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's a studio apartment, how many people can live there? If it's a one-bedroom apartment, how many people can live there? Uh, two bedrooms. But through the I'm chair, sure, I'm yeah. sorry. I, start, I started it. It was my fault. But um, <laughs> um, I do want to, I, I appreciate that, Frank, and I think that um, it's a different discussion. I think the deed restriction is definitely a discussion to have. Um, but I think that this board needs to start um, specifically highlighting uh, school impact or potential school impact on our agendas. And I don't know what it means for this project or any project coming forward, but um, we, we don't comply with any formulas that are known to be used by the state of Massachusetts. And we just need to start confronting what the actual impact might be. You know, so I have that one. I've got a couple mm -hmm. at the end, but okay. I, I wanted to let members of the public also add items to the agenda. So anybody interested, please come forward, state your name and your address. Well, well that's good. You know, you know, do we want to just add a line item for services at, in general? You know, emergency, yes. police, schools. Um, Could it impact on service? I mean, yeah. It, yeah, so impact and service. I mean, that yeah. would almost fall to some degree under J, um, but I'll kind of say mm -hmm. impact of other services. Thank that you. would be ambulatory, police, fire, et cetera. And school, right? Fine school, definitely number one. Nobody? Come on. Thank you. Mary R. Nod, 51 Teresa Road. It wasn't clear to me if in any of the lists, um, and if it can be added, the potential impact on water resources. It seems to me that this would generate a lot of water usage, not only in the businesses, but in the units. And um, as the town struggles with the availability of water, drinking water, to water your lawns in the summer, that sort of thing, is that can that be added to it? it you know, and, and that's my error. I didn't mention it. It is actually on the, um, the outline Thank to you. talk about that. Yep. Right. Anybody else? No? All right, so I'll just... I'll, uh, uh, screening of mechanical equipment. Yeah, call screening. me on that one. Um, <laughs> screening of mechanical equipment. I also had that under kind of a general noise. Um, trash, um, HVAC exhaust. So there's two there, actually. HVAC is one, and potential exhaust from the restaurant unit, uh, as well as um, you know, just the rest, restaurant vendors um, and service providers that are coming in and out. Um, a butter impact, but I think that will kind of uh, flow in, um, in the normal course of the discussion. And uh, I think those are the only ones that I had. Through the chair? Frank? We have um, town department and board committees, uh, but specifically there is a, the question about the historical significance of the building in that situation, so maybe that should have its own sub section under J. Amy mentioned that historic. That to add that. Yeah. Yeah. She, she mentioned it in there. And you know, just that so people are aware that is a point with the historical commission uh, now to determine what the status of that is. Right? So I don't, I'm not going to get too caught up with this because I think the, the, that lays with Amy and the historical commission. Thank you, Vernon. Amy? Very good. Um, all right, moving forward, we've got about 12 minutes left, and I want to kind of take full advantage of it with the applicant. Oh. Come on forward. State your name and your address, sir. I'm not going to sit down. I'm just assume staying up. My name is Paul Anthony. I'm residing at number nine, Soda Street, and this is going to definitely impact my home. Um, I wish, could someone show me where the restaurant on this drawing is going to be? And where the dumpster is going to be? The restaurant. Sure. Well, we're just here, Paul. It comes through me, right? Okay. So I'm happy. We're happy to address those questions. This point here, from a, the public's point of view, is just adding additional line items to the outline in the agenda. Okay. So the concern being the dumpster. Perfect. It's going to be just about in my front yard. And, and I mentioned that under noise, we're going to talk about dumpster and the impact with the trash. HVAC. Mm -hmm. yep. I've got to mention that. 
Yep. So the one you also mentioned was the restaurant. I think the location of the restaurant. Mm -hmm. And I think we'll go through that when the applicant provides the design review element. You'll be able to see where that restaurant is in the overall design plan. It might just be a quick answer. I mean, I think it's right in front, but I, I don't want to kind of, I don't want to speak for the applicant. But we Restaurants in the front corner, uh, right near the street, and the dumpsters in the back corner. That thing for the restaurant's going to be through the roof, so. So, very good. Awesome. Thank you. Anything else? We'll add it to the overall agenda and discuss it. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, Let's go through. Uh, we'll start with the detailed discussion. Um, the first uh, item here is vehicular and pedestrian traffic flow uh, and truck traffic flow. Grant, so I'm sorry. Should we go take a uh, should we take a planning board review out there to see the surrounding neighborhood the site walk? Should we do you want to do uh, want to schedule a site walk? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, I know it's very familiar to us, but not many of us have walked around and really contemplated. I'm amenable to doing that, Mural. I think that's a, a great idea. Um, you know, I think that would then kind of bring together some of these outstanding questions. Um, so do we want to try to just schedule that now while we have time for folks? Uh, typically, Saturday mornings are a rhythm that usually works. Nine o'clock is usually a good time for everybody. Nine o'clock. The date of TBD. I'm unavailable this Saturday. It's an option. I would prefer earlier only because I have a lot of kids' sports commitments on you know, Saturday. When the weather gets better, I think a lot of people do with that, so I would be open to an earlier time, but it's up to the board. And The, the next two Saturdays are, are around the school vacation, so I don't know if we want to go out farther than that. or Let's see here. What are we looking at? I'll take a straw vote on who would be available this Saturday. So this Saturday would be the 13th. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, that, and that's weekend. Marathon Weekend. It is Marathon Weekend. Mm. Yeah. That would be tricky. Um, they start uh, closing the street down Saturday. No, no, they don't start closing. No, no. no. They pass out the, 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 the guardrails out. They're all out so, there, so yeah, but you know. Yeah. You, can, you can make it work. Um, 13th, 20th, or 27th. I am not going on the 27th. On the 20th, but uh, that's okay. I can I can stop around it. I can do the 13th. Do, maybe you should just do a show of hands for each date. Yeah. All right, let's go. 13th, who can make it? One, two, three, four, one, two, maybe. three, four, five, and a half. Uh, the 20th, who can make it? One, I have two. two social life. Oh, that's a maybe two then. Right, let's go to the 27th. That's what so I was saying. saying. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, 27th. All right. All right. But so can the applicant make the 27th at 8 a.m.? 8 a.m. Awesome. Wow. Does that work here? Yeah. Earlier the better. Question, is the barbershop still open? Are the salons still open? Frank. <laughs> I could do two Please. things, two Let's things in one day. That's very good. Let's focus on what we have. Uh, we have a little bit of time, so we're going to do the site walk. And the site walk is open for members of the public. If uh, anyone is so interested, right. uh, we will meet in front of the property. Eight. Um, is it okay? I think there's parking at 76. in front of the police station. There's some dedicated. Uh, there's some parking at 8 a.m. on Saturday. Usually the, the street. On street parking. There's on street parking that will be available as well. All right. Um, they can also park at 76 Main Street. We have parking there too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Public of the parameters of a site walk. It's not to discuss or debate. For those that show up, we're definitely going to walk through that yeah. whole thing. Um, so, question member from the public. Sure, come on up and just state your name and your address. And I'm not to get off the list. Sure. Um, Carol well, Nathan, 9 Summer Street. And I don't think that this is on the agenda, and I'm not sure if I can address it. Um, the impact on neighbors, obviously, but the impact on property values or taxes or how the property value with the changes in the neighborhood, what that may or may not do for our property values in the downtown area. Okay. Fred, here, just a process question. Are, are we 
sorry, are we just going into general comments here or are we going into? No, I want to go through the individual, I want to go through the line item, Gary. So I want to look at when the detailed discussion, we'll start with the vehicular and traffic. Okay. Is where we're at right now. We'll have five or seven minutes to do. Oh, <laughs> see, I'm sorry, sir. On this, on this subject, uh, John, your name, uh, your name, John Palmer, 87 Main Street. I live just to the west of this uh, proposed development. Um, main, my house is on the uh, south side, uh, but I walk, I'm a walker, I walk downtown constantly. So when you come down from my house, you go past the old high school, then you go past the where Bob Falcioni is, and then the, the Jewelers building. And then I cross, normally, if I'm crossing the street, I normally cross at the wide uh, crosswalk. Side, crosswalk in front of the uh, fire department. Mm -hmm. It's safer because uh, I've got the police department on one side and the fire department on the other side. It's wide and it's fairly flat there. I heard some discussion about bringing that crosswalk further to the west, and I want you to know that that is going to impose a great danger on people crossing because you're coming, the cars are coming over the hill from the west, and they're coming down fast, and they won't have as much time to see somebody in the sidewalk. I think that's a very important uh, Consideration. Okay, very good. I'll let the applicant, I don't think it's impacting that at all, but I'll just clarify that with the applicant. We can discuss it in the traffic, the vehicle and pedestrian traffic. I think we just started. <laughs> <laughs> um, why don't we do that, unless there's other questions that I missed, why don't we do that? Why don't we start with the vehicle and pedestrian traffic flow? And so may, may I suggest that we start with the burning question that Gary had and I have. It seems kind of weird for cars. I don't know of any other major parking lot in town like this that doesn't have a way for cars to loop around that have to have to back up. I mean, there's, I, I, I don't think it's a good idea to expect cars to back up. Trucks. Trucks. Is well, trucks. Well, what about cars? Like if you go through and you can't find a parking spot, what do you do? Yeah, that's true. What's that? Yes, that's true. So we have provided a, a dedicated space right here that is striped out. So for instance, if you came down and you could not find a parking stall, the very last one is striped out and does not allow parking. So that way if you get to this point, you're able to just pull in and back out and move out uh, as you normally would. So we do not count that as a, as a parking stall. For the chair. Got it. So Mary. And I also did notice that on your uh, your um, plan that, that specified where snow was going to be stored, that was one of the places that snow would be stored. So it works during the summer, but, um, and I, I, just in general, I have concerns about snow, unless you're planning on moving snow off site um, to remove it from the site. And the fact that it's um, your primary area for storage is at the beginning of the um, parking lot around the loading zone area. And it just seems to me that, you know, as snow piles do, they tend to spread a little bit more from where they were supposed to be contained. And that will just make the trucks move closer into the parking areas. And it'll just be very difficult to do during, you know, high snow time periods, so. so through the chair, can, so, in that situation you just described, so someone can't find a parking spot, they pull into that last spot there, or that last area there, and then is the course line spot across it empty as well? No, just, just so, the drive. <coughs> so, so, but if they back out, they have to go this way, which they can't do. You, no, it's no different. Yeah, it's no different than any other stall. You, you, can, you can come out straight and then make that turn. It's a 24-foot it's a drive aisle. So you You'll have to, to practice your backing up, Gary. I guess, the Gary, don't worry about my backing up. Through the chair, through the chair. I guess it would be the same as any other parking spot up there. But I, I don't know. It's not because every other spot you can you can pull in and you can back up and turn. That's true. That's true. Good point. Good point. Good point. Yeah. But I just I kind of asked the question. I just want to make a comment that I I really don't like the idea of not having a flow through of traffic where you don't have to turn around because every other business in town that I can think of we have an outlet that you can drive through. I mean, even Dunkin' Donuts doesn't have a loop around it, but you can still drive around and pull onto the main street if you don't find parking. So I would just ask if you could consider an alternative. I don't know if the uh, the drive out the back 
is an option for the to the police station. Yeah, we've, we've actually looked at that. But it's a pretty significant grade differential between here and here to, to make that work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I would I would just ask that the applicant just not automatically shake his head no and and, and just discuss with the board if there are any kind of options to improve the flow. So the chair, well, last point, it's almost 8.30, I'm going to okay. close the public hearing, so it's been a lot. <coughs> are the two different graphs, uh, one that's showing the truck turnaround area, and then this one here, uh, this shows a green area in the corner, and then the, that's where the truck turnaround area is. So which one is it? So this area here is for the truck turn. We have a grass paved system that's proposed there, so it's essentially, it's structurally enhanced. It's uh, like a honeycomb type of, uh, type of structure. So that can handle trucks? Yeah. Uh, the, the weight of the truck is. So I just want to second David's uh, concern. Uh, if the police do give us input, which would be great, it would be nice to see if, I, I know, I don't know they don't have traffic go down Claflin Way, but an emergency exit or something in case of fire might be a consideration. Very good. So noted. Uh, it is 8.30. Um, I'm going to close the public hearing. Well, I'm not going to close it. We'll continue the public hearing. Thank you very much. Uh, no, I need that. I need that. Um, we've gotten through uh, a couple of the bullet points. I appreciate the members of the public for coming, the applicant and his team. Here's a question. Final question? Uh, comment. Sure. Just state your name and your, your address, sir. Hi, guys. My name is Christopher Nagel, and I'm owner of Old Town Leaguer and the building in the 17th century. Mm -hmm. And I have some concerns because it seems like the parking. If the parking is full, the people is going to start parking in the side of the street, which I have a trip parking in my front store with the problem and be parked in the back one. Mm -hmm. And if I saw in the schedule it was just one for dance at one place, I don't think it's enough for one dance for 26 units. Mm. It's a little bit more. Mm. I don't think it's going to be. Yeah. I, I think he brings up a good point, and we need to consider those thoughts when we discuss this further. We're, we're going to continue this to another meeting. Uh, another not with the project, but just yeah. I, I, just, I was just stating that we're going to continue this at another, I would imagine, two weeks from now. We're going to continue talking about this further because we don't have any more time for it. But that's a, a great point. Yeah. And maybe we could do something with, like, 20-minute parking in front or something like that. Something we can consider. To, to protect the my business. Got it. Not, nothing else. Makes sense. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you much. Elaine, mm -hmm. open time. So the next meeting is April 22nd, and there is an opening at 7.35. How long is the opening? Excuse me. Uh, there's Future. nothing scheduled after that other than items that don't have a specific time. But okay. we do want to eventually get to some of those. Right. All right. Do we want to look at that? Would that be? Okay. Okay. Before you do that, can I just um, <coughs> have a question or make a statement? Um, town meeting is coming up and there's an election coming up and there's going to be people on this board that are no longer going to be here so I guess at this point it doesn't really make a difference because we've started it but you're going to lose people at the election so you can miss one and watch it. So if new people came on, can they watch this meeting and vote or no? no. Have not been a member? Out. Well, I think it's a good okay. point for the, the applicants if they want to skip the 22nd and wait till the new board is in place to see what your options are, or would you rather just meet on the 22nd? Well, Elaine's saying those people can't vote anyway, even if they watch tonight's meeting, so. They can reapply if they wanted to. There are options. Ele elections in May, though, so. I mean, it's mm -hmm. I'm just bringing it up so right. you're No, we're aware, aware of it. We know, we know that there's yeah, several openings on it's the board. Up to the applicant. Yeah, right. I think you went through this last year, right? We did. <laughs> so is, is your preference the 22nd or a different? I think our preference. I think we would keep the 22nd, second. and then depending on what happens, maybe we could always reschedule. Sure. Cool. All right, well, let's do uh, 7.30 on the 22nd. 7.35. I'll make a 7.35. To continue this public hearing to 7.35 on April 22nd. Um, motion. Discussion. Discussion. Can we go um, 
What is longer? Like maybe 90 minutes, minutes there? And, the, and I guess my only rationale is that I actually think it serves everyone well, including the public, if we actually commit more time. And we have the time available, so why not? Yeah. Right? So let's take it for let's take it for 90 minutes. All right. So there's a uh, motion on the table. Is there a second? We just, we just pick a motion to start at 7:35. Right? How, yes. long, how much time we allow for it will depend on how many other things. Well, I think we should, we should, right? well, we should we'll set aside a period of time. Yeah. What we can ask okay. Elaine to do is not schedule anything before the 90 minutes. What if we have well, two more things to get the chair that sets the agenda? <laughs> we'll have to continue it after that. I get to set the agenda. Okay. Let them talk about themselves. It'll happen as happens. All right. So, any more discussion? Yep. So, uh, is there a second? Second. All right. So, this is for continue the public hearing for the 22nd at 7:35. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. <coughs> Abstain. Carries. All right. See you on the 22nd. Thank you very much. Right. The next item on the agenda is the continued the public hearing and the continued public hearing for the proposed zoning bylaw amendments. Would you like me to time. What's that? Would you like me to introduce them? Uh, I do. I just want to kind of lay the groundwork a little bit for members of the public. Uh, that are here for the, the various uh, articles. Um, there are one, two, three, four, five, six uh, proposed amendments to discuss. I'll, I'll go right down the list. The first being the self storage facility, the second, the open space mixed use development, the third, the commercial Did solo photovoltaic installations. Did we vote to open the continued? No, I'm just. Okay. We're going to vote to continue it. Mindful of the time. Sure. Um, and there's two others. So make a motion, or I entertain a motion, to open up the public hearing. So moved. Second. Moved and second in discussion. All those second? In, yeah, there's a second. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. All those in favor, <laughs> signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, it is open. Um, so just continuing down, there's six items. The commercial solar voltaic, indoor recreation, car wash, and associated retail. Um, what I'd like to do here is have the sponsor uh, and or the uh, chair of the Zoning Advisory Committee uh, maybe kind of talk about it at a high level. Um, the planning board can ask questions and clarification that I'd like to open up to the public for their comments uh, and questions. Uh, planning board can then do a final round of discussion prior to voting on that recommendation. Uh, we have approximately 50, is it 55 minutes or no, 30 minutes, minutes ooh, which is not much. And we have to get this done because it has to get done tonight. Yep. Okay. So what's the first one? So the self storage. First one, yep, self storage facility. Okay, that's the sponsor. That, that is, is a citizen's petition. I believe the petitioner is here. <laughs> I'm back. Hey. I'm back. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, citizen so petition. Sorry, just, that's number 11 on our sheet. That's number 11 on the sheet. Page 153. Self storage facility, correct. Uh, Mr. Mastriani. Yes, Mr. Dion. Uh, my name is Paul Mastriani, and I actually, uh, we brought this request uh, to the Zone Advisory Board. It was voted down for uh, storage. When was that date? Um, Kathy, you actually. It was back several months ago. Back several months ago. So when it was voted down, um, I did a citizen's petition to have self storage um, in the industrial A on South Street, you know, permitted. So we are going to, I mean, should I read the actual yeah. self storage facilities? Yep. Uh, the proposal would add self storage facilities as a use by right, industrial A district. Adopt a parking requirement of two spaces per 10,000 square feet of gross floor area. The amendment re uh, request was reviewed by the Zone Advisory Committee, which did not recommend it, uh, the change to the planning board. So again, we did a citizen's petition, which we are on the warrant for the town meeting. And I, I'm not sure if it needs a two-thirds vote or... Um, it does. Yeah. Okay, so it requires a two-thirds vote. Um, 
So maybe if we could just talk through, again, why. These are services, both the car wash and the storage facility, but in the case of the storage facility, the service is not currently available in the town for to service to residents or businesses. We have Hopkinton residents that are bringing their business to, you know, these neighboring towns for these types of services, and, and there are a Milford, Ashland, et cetera, that offer these services. We, we believe that the uses are well aligned with the mix and the variety of existing businesses within Industrial A, as well as the permitted list of approved uses within Industrial A. And felt strongly that these would fit in better within this district where it's located versus um, other parts of town and other zoning areas in town. Um, it was voted down for a variety of reasons, some of which um, were that this is not a high uh, job Creative. number, Creative. does not generate a high number of jobs, nor a number of high paying jobs and such. Um, so I think our thought was more that there's a significant amount of vacant warehouse, office, R&D space on South Street, um, and especially with the unknown of what might happen even with Dell in the next one to five years. If they chose to relocate, that would put more vacant space in this industrial A district. Um, I don't think we feel that adding more of that type of space is, real, is really a prudent development decision for the property that um, Paul owns. So that was our thoughts uh, this. Before that, I'd like to, uh, Mayor, if there's any comments, you guys did vote on it, was uh, maybe you can kind of articulate and give a little background and discussion and um, rationale. Yes, there was, there was a, a wide variety of, of thoughts on this. Um, one, uh, one side of it was why don't we, you know, th there's, there's certainly, you know, reasonable business use. Um, why don't we send it to the voters at town meeting? Um, and then the other side of it was essentially that, um, again, you know, as, as, uh, as the petitioner was stating, that this does not produce a lot of jobs, um, not high paying jobs. It is highly likely to be a use that will stay there for a long time. Um, and um, so it, it doesn't necessarily fit with the, with, with the type of business that, we're, that, that we wish to encourage, you know, the highest value type of business that we would wish to encourage in the industrial A and industrial B. Um, so those were the, the two points of view. Um, questions from the board? Sure. The chair? Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, can we have some clarification where else a storage business could be located in town? No, no place. No place. And um, that's maybe part of the question that um, we're looking at is, is <coughs> this area not, um, if there's pre-existing businesses there, it doesn't seem like they're going to push out a business. It's going to seem like they're going to add a business. And it's a business in a industrial area. So that part seems to fit. Um, what we're looking to do, even though it's not the perfect, everyone's a, a scientist and everyone's um, uh, doing this, doing their thing, uh, creating jobs. Um, but it does, it does help increase the industrial, the commercial tax base, and um, I don't see it hurting anything. Um, but my my major question is, would there be anywhere else in town that would be a better solution? And I'm thinking the answer is no. So I don't think. So. Can we get uh, the picture of? Do we have the the, um, the zoning map? Just to be able to can we pull that up, possibly. Um, Might take me a minute. Yeah, that's fine. We can we can discuss in the meantime because I think there's a couple other petitions that is it, have. Is this just along the 495 yeah, corridor? Yeah, right, right, right off South Street. Yes, correct. Right. It's the South Street corridor. Can the chair clarify a question? So. Um, self storage is not allowed by special permit either, correct? Correct. So, so that was going to be my question. You, know, you and I are thinking a lot tonight alike. Um, <coughs> was there an option to add it by special permit instead of by right? We, we're trying to get this approved, um, obviously, you know, by right. 
And like uh, Mr. Durso said, there is there's no place in town right now that you could you know have self storage. Uh, this is a, you know from doing a little research, there's a pretty huge need for it. Um, it's in every town around us. If anybody from Hopkinton, you know, they can go to Milford, they can go to Westbrook, they can go to Ashland, they can go to Upton. Why not just keep the services in town? So I think it it obviously adds to our services in town. And you're right, it's not going to bring in uh, any Mensa candidates to run it and you know go make three hundred thousand dollars a year, but you know, it, it, yeah, well, I'm definitely not a Mensa candidate. So I think that, you know, that's the reason why, uh, you know, I'm proposing it for South Street. I mean, I don't, again, the zone advisory, you know, didn't agree, which when we actually brought it in front of them and they said yes to a car wash, I didn't think they would, you know, I thought the car wash would be a no and the, the uh, storage would be a no-brainer. But, again, I, you know, I, I don't know what they were thinking. So just to follow, yeah. follow up my question. Okay. I'm um, sorry. Um, the point being that I think it's a controversial enough um, discussion that I'd rather see it by special permit than by um, by right. Just my comment. Yeah. yeah. So, I, so this, in the interest of time, this is going to go to town meeting whether or not we approve it. Correct. I think maybe right. we should limit our discussion. It, 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 right. Either we want to kind of endorse this. Here's the thing. We'd love your endorsement. We can endorse it. We can not endorse it. We can decide, you know, not endorse it, or you just kind of push it, right? You'll end up with the three options. You're just making a recommendation. Just making the recommendation. So we don't need to overthink it, Carol. Okay. So sitting on Zach, I, I personally am opposed to this. It is, in my opinion, it's a large use of land in a zone that we have not a lot of land that for years people have been telling us we need to maximize the use of this land to bring in tax revenue to stabilize our tax base and everything else and this is a big use of land we're not talking about a special permit we're not talking about one particular property which if that was the situation I might be a little bit looking at it differently we're talking about the entire zone it's a it's a huge use space-wise, and it, it generates little benefit to the town. Yes, it is a convenience for people that have more stuff to store than they can keep on their property. Personally, that's not a big deal to me, and I don't think we should be giving up our industrial zone for that. Fair enough. So, comment? Hold on, I go Mary first. Oh, one. sorry. Um, yeah, I, so. I find myself very conflicted on this uh, because um, I, see that, I see that it's a use that people, uh, I myself used self-storage in Westboro, uh, to your point, um, when I was doing renovations. Um, but, and we don't have a lot of people flocking to South Street as much as we would like to have highest and best use of that property. Um, and I think that that argument carries, carries weight. I, I, you know, I would hate to see it be an entire lineup of car washes and and self-storage facilities. Um, I definitely would um, be more likely to support it if it was by special permit. Right. So, yes, so, so just given that Zach has already reviewed this and chosen not to support it, uh, it's still going to tell me either way. Mm -hmm. right. But based on that and then based on our timing constraints here, I'd actually like to move that we um, vote that we, I'm sorry, I move that we don't support this for town meeting. So we haven't heard from the public yet. I, see. Right. I need to kind of open okay. up to the public. Let me open up to the public for we comments can, on this particular topic. Though, right? We can. We can. We have a move. So I'm just going to second it and then we can discussion. But I want to, before we do that, no, I want to open up to the public first before discussion. Okay. Discussion with right, board members. Right? So let me open up to the public on this particular topic. Self-storage facilities. <clears throat> so come on up and state your name and your address, please. Mary are not 51 Teresa Road. Um, I would not be in favor of the entire district being opened up to storage facilities if there would be a certain section of the business dis district or a certain limit on the amount of square feet um, that you might include as well as the special permit. Uh, I think that would give you some flexibility in terms of still being able to try to attract some more uh, tax generating businesses and something that would generate jobs as opposed to just allowing the whole district to become self storage if they if somebody wanted to. Okay. Thank you. 
Ron Foisy, 25 Chamberlain Street. Um, a member of the Economic Development Council of the Chamber, and one comment that we hear regularly from business owners, there are not enough amenities in town for them to locate their business here. This is a perfect amenity that would help the Economic Development Council work more aggressively to attract businesses to town. So I would support it. So. All right, anybody else? Nanda Barker, Hook 75 Grove Street. I just wanted to um, speak. My husband's not here, but my husband, Ted Barker, Hook sent a letter in. So hopefully everybody received that. And he's mm -hmm. in opposition. Thank you. Thank you, Nanda. <coughs> Anybody else from the public? Okay, now I would entertain. Is there a motion on the table? Sure. So I want to make sure I do not support it. I move that uh, we, as a planning board, uh, vote to not support this amendment. Second. Okay. There's a Some discussion? Yeah, I just have a personal fondness for making affirmative motions so that when you're voting yes, you're voting yes, and when you're voting no, you're voting no, but, but I, I get it. This is to not support the proposal. Yeah, I, I just hope in, in practice. So it doesn't mean you support it if you say I, I move to vote to to support it, it'll, it'll f rise or fall and get the same I think that's a fair point, so can I rephrase that movement? <laughs> Sorry. So then I move that we um, support this amendment on, um, what's the right way to say this? Um, the meeting floor. Self storage. You want to support this amendment going support forward? Support this amendment as written um, to go forward. So this forward. petition. Yeah. Yes. Right. I'll second that. Okay. Um, Discussion points now. Discussion. Um, I don't think we should. I think that Zach, we need to respect what Zach has brought back. Um, and I think as, as being um, one of our very own boards that we um, appoint and that, um, and we should listen and hear to what Zach said and Zach did not approve it. Um, I don't think that that necessarily means that that's what's going to happen in, in, in the meeting, in the town meeting. So um, I would um, counter that um, thought. All right. The comments quickly? Quickly. Um, Two seconds. Now I'm panicking. <laughs> uh, I, I'm for this being passed and supported by us. I believe in free enterprise. We have a business owner that wants to do something positive in town, bring a business to town. Uh, it's one. It's not like we're, I, it, I, would, yeah, I would like it better if it was spot zoning, it was not spot zoning. It, it's given them a chance to, to run a business. It's free enterprise, that's what America's built on. That's why I would support voting yes. Thank you. Um, I will also support this amendment. Uh, I do think it's a reasonable business use. I don't think it's the uh, zoning uh, industrial A is gonna be now overrun by storage facilities. Um, I do think to Mr. Foisy's point, um, businesses are, are looking for amenities and this kind of fits the tab on this one. So I am in favor of it. Any more discussion? All right, now it's time for a vote. All those in favor of voting to support this going forward to town meeting, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Dang. Oh boy. It's uh, close. It's close. Four to five, it failed. Four to five, did, did, you, did you do it correctly? All right, did you get all this, Kobe? Um, Fran, you I was the four. You're in favor, and Frank, Mary and Frank. Mary. Mary and, and Mariel. <coughs> all right, very good. Is the next one the senior housing development affordable units? It is indeed. Okay. Do we want to do, oh. can I make a suggestion that we do the car wash while we have the, okay. the component? Okay. Uh, do we want to do that? Do you think that we're going to get that one through? Do we have a, what do you mean a sponsor? Well, that wasn't just a petition. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought, oh, that's, uh, I thought he was mentioning that they had. Oh, 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 no. He did bring no, it to no, the no. bank, I believe. Okay. But then Zach supported it. Okay, so right? Zach supported it. Zach right. supported it, yeah. But then we, we discussed it, okay, so, if we're going to discuss the car wash one, do you want to do that one? So, she, Mary mentioned great, talking about the car wash not going in the exact order, but since the applicant is here, why don't we just kind of take care of that? Hopefully, we can get it done relatively quickly. But I don't think there was an applicant involved. Uh, wasn't it a citizen's petition? No. 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 It is not. Okay. Zach. I right, take it back. <coughs> so, ahead, car wash was discussed as a use to add to the industrial A district, um, and I, I write, I think. Um, and we discussed oh, it at, okay, special permit, but we discussed it at, on February 25th. 
and we continued the discussion because we, we several of us wanted to um, work on rewording um, and perhaps taking it out of the business district and so on. So, so the proposal that was okay with the town council? That's one of the things you were checking? Did the necessary okay. advertisement. So, so that's why we're bringing it up again, is because we've changed the proposal to remove it from the downtown business district and the business district, right? It was a consensus. It wasn't voted. Right? But it was yeah. But that's the new wording, you know. And to add it to industrial A. So it's basically instead of downtown. Right. We'd add it to industrial A. Is it by right or by special? by special permit. Okay? Is everybody clear on that? No. Okay. So is it is it two separate votes, one to take it out of downtown no. and one to put it in industrial A? No. We are putting it in one article. At the at the February twenty fifth hearing the board um, was the consensus to um, <coughs> potentially proceed with while well, adding it to industrial A by special mm -hmm. permit to remove it from downtown business at the same time. So it's as one article. Yes, now. one article. I don't think that's stated clearly here, number seven. I don't see anything about removing it from the business in downtown. If you're looking at the original February 25th handout, yeah. it's not the, there. Yeah. No, I'm looking at what we have tonight, page 148. But that's, that's still the original. February 25th handout. Okay. Okay. That's the original. Okay. All right, so I'll take your word on it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So, Carol, are you clear what we're, what we're doing? Right? Yep. We'll read it out. Um, uh, discussion, further discussion by board members. And then I'm going to open it up to the public. So, um, try to keep it brief. There's a very good point, through the chair, there's a very good point that uh, Ted Barker makes about the uh, environmental impact. Um, and I like to say that the car wash that's in Westboro that's solar powered, uh, I know there's one in Douglas that's solar powered, and I hope that. Uh, You'd be willing to do a solar-powered car wash um, to kind of offset the environmental. Uh, and they reuse the gray water as well. It's nice. Yeah. So let's not talk about specifics of the environmental. But but we had the Zach had included wording that said you know it would be using the you know most state-of-the-art resource utilization could, could include Which solar could include the gray water the the whole bit. And that's why it's under special permit rather than by right, cool. so that it would go through that process and and have to meet those things. Correct. So that's that's the idea going forward to town meeting. Okay. Right. Quick comment. In, in language, hold on a second. In language Suggested. by um, well, town council has made it as such that it's sustainable and efficient use of resources. So I think by by special permit that discussion is going to kind of come forth. So quickly, I'll allow it, but then I want to just a forward. quick note that. Um, this is similar to the previous discussion on uh, storage. That is a controversial item, and um, because we're doing it by special permit, I support it. Okay, um, but I do want to open it up to members of the public for their comment, unless there's more discussion by board members. So this is any comment uh, regarding the uh, car wash? Mary, I'm not 51 Teresa Road. Um, this came up at a planning board meeting that I attended before, and I spoke <coughs> against it for the reasons of that I was very concerned about water usage. Um, a car wash does not generate jobs. It does not generate a lot of tax revenue, uh, but it is a very detrimental use of uh, water resources, which I think is trying to be addressed through the zoning board on the environmental issues with special permit, maybe state-of-the-art technology or what. Um, but again, I would speak out against putting car washes in town. Um, there's enough close enough by, and you're in your car, you can drive five minutes to get to a car wash if you need to have it done in Ashland or Milford or whatever. So I'm very concerned about water resources because every summer we're told not to water our, you know, our lawns and not to be able to put water in pools. And, and this town has a water resource problem as it is. So that, I just bring that up for that reason. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Any other members of the public? All right. Um, any other discussion here? I'd like to make a motion to support the article, or support the, I guess, the article as written. Right? With the car wash moving to Industrial A and out of the downtown Correct. business. Is that town council's language? Yes. Town council's language. Special permit. Second. Can't wait. It's in there. My special permit. Yeah. yeah. Frank seconded it. I, I already seconded it. Second. Uh, any further discussion? 
All right. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? All those abstain? Opposed. Oh, Carol, got one. Anybody else? One opposed, no abstentions. Motion passes. Right. Two minutes. Two minutes. Which one do we think we can do in two minutes? Another of the old associated retail? Associate. Um, no, yeah. but we already voted. So they're all simple. We're all simple, all simple yesterday. Okay. Um, let's go um, in uh, associate retail to manufacturing use, number okay. five. We did discuss this on 225. Um, and our consensus was to propose it by special permit instead of by right and incorporate town council language. So, and I just needed to check the ad, which was fine. So <laughs> okay, and, and town council said it was, it was fine to do without re-advertising? You can do, you, yeah, we okay. advertise to cover that. Okay, so, so essentially, <coughs> so I, I'm, I'm just trying to understand whether or not we are rediscussing this as a, as a, a public hearing or if that has already been done. Board didn't never close it out. Board didn't vote because it, was, it wasn't clear okay. whether. You correct, could. correct. And let me just to uh, everyone's edification. What we're talking about here is accessory retail to manufacturing use, industrial A and industrial B districts. This proposal would allow a manufacturing use in industrial A and industrial B districts to have an associated accessory retail use within the same district, with a maximum area of up to 5,000 square feet. Some of these manufacturers' are, uses currently allowed involve the production of goods such as apparel, furniture, and wood products, and it may be beneficial for these uses to have a small retail area where they can sell their goods directly. This use would not be allowed by right, but by special permit. So just to provide some context here. Uh, Mary? Yeah, and that's that, uh, generally it was, uh, as, as said on February 25th, it was supported by uh, Zach. Um, at the time for by right, but you know, we've, we've modified that to by special permit mm -hmm. and as a way of um, making, you know, a retail uses that are right next to the manufacturing for that retail use um, an easy addition for a business. So I'd like to make a motion. Okay. Before we go, let me ask okay. public, public, sorry. any public comment regarding the change of accessory retail to manufacturing use and industrial We did have public comment at the first one too, so. Okay. All right, no comments. So I'd like to make a motion to support the article as written by town council. Is that okay to say that? Mm -hmm. As modified by the board. As modified, by, as modified, as modified by, by, by council to use a special permit. Yes, by special permit. Okay. Second. Uh, it's uh, second has been seconded for discussion. <coughs> all right. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, all those opposed. All those abstaining. So passes. All right, so it is 9 o'clock uh, at this time. Oh, I probably need, we want to continue, I'm going to try to continue this. Pick it up later. I can just pick it up, I don't need to do anything. All right, so we are now going to move to item number three, which is the 9 o'clock of the continued public hearing, Buckland and Leonard Street, stormwater management application. Uh, do I need to make a motion to open up the public hearing? So move. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Very good. Okay. For everyone here. Let me just kind of get on the right page with everybody. Yes, the point of process. Outline is on page 179. Mr. 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 Um, is there a point, a time certain we should conclude this discussion so that we can finish? Um, ideally, well, I'll, I'll ask the applicant here in a second um, what that potentially would look like in terms of the timing for him. So I can ask you a question about uh, process before you do that? Yeah. We're going to need about 20, at least 20 minutes. For the continuing of the majority, yeah. oh, that's what I was going to ask. Thank you. All right. So the public hearing is now open. Uh, as the applicant gets settled in, I'll do a quick re recap for everyone. Uh, this is a continued public hearing for Buckland and Leonard Streets. Um, two parts to it. One is the stormwater management permit. And the second is the petition to construct a paper street, Wall Street Development Corporation. So the applicant had submitted a stormwater management permit um, reviewed by the board November 1st, 2018. 
Uh, we need to make a decision on it by April 24th. Um, at the last time the applicant was in front of us, I believe it was the end of January. Um, so there's, I'm sure some things have happened in the interim period to some degree. I will turn it over to the applicant to uh, maybe recap um, for the board members, things that have occurred, but also just in general, what's, what's your Sure, opinion? thank you. Uh, Lou Petrosi for Wall Street Development Corp. Uh, since we were last here, um, we underwent a revision of the plan to uh, address comments made by Beta Engineering. Um, I believe the planning board has a copy of that letter. Um, based on our reading of the letter, I think all the items that Beta had um, identified have been uh, addressed in the revision. Um, there was one item that was remaining that um, I believe our engineers had a conversation with, uh, with uh, Beta on uh, last Friday regarding the first uh, 160 feet or so of uh, roadway from Pleasant Street, in which case they've uh, we've worked out an imp uh, a porous pavement type of uh, installation that will be uh, utilized to maintain uh, uh, the drainage calculations uh, post-development. Um, that's pretty much where we stand relative to the um, stormwater management permit. There's really not much uh, uh, in terms of other comments related to the actual uh, petition to construct the roadway. Right. Um, so that's for the stormwater management and the petition, no other, no changes, no updates on that, correct? Uh, I don't think so. No. So <clears throat> I think from uh, Elaine, I'll ask for any comments from yourself on this and maybe also, of course, a little uh, direction here. And then I'll also have Phil from Beta to come up to address the, uh, their updates on the uh, stormwater management permit. Um, and any other comments that he has relative to the application for Wall Street? I think it would be um, interesting to hear from Beta. There were some additional comments, um, a lot of things that could be addressed in conditions. Um, and I think um, the board still needs to go through the hearing outline. Yep. Um, with regard to um, some road design, I think a lot of the things that we touched on already. Um, but I think just following through the, the detailed discussion makes sense. Do that. Uh, Phil, why don't you come on up and... So, yeah, just for the record, Phil Paradis with Beta Group. Uh, again, we've been asked to peer review this on behalf of the town. The, um, so, uh, it's been now several months since we first did our initial, initial review. I think we've done, this will be a third uh, review uh, of, the, of the plan and package. Um, to address the additional runoff being directed to Pleasant Street, uh, as uh, Lou said, the additional, the, the first part of the road is proposed to be porous pavement. So it, it, it comes with unique uh, maintenance issues and, and replacement issues. So, so if you look at the SW4, uh, just making sure that those things are um, A, approved by, uh, Approved by the uh, DPW, uh, to make sure that they can maintain it, they can clean it, uh, if, if it in fact is going to be a public road. Uh, some soil tests to make sure that the separation of groundwater. Subsequent to this comment, I had a discussion with his engineer uh, about uh, kind of a condition that would include if, if there wasn't the two foot, typical two foot separation from the bottom of the pavement design, to the season of hot groundwater, putting in a membrane to, to protect the, the, the groundwater resources. Uh, he's designed the system that would drain through a period uh, uh, through some perforated pipes out to the town drain. So that could that could be done. Um, and then uh, uh, if, if it's going to be uh, developed as a homeowner's that's going to take over it and maintain the the, the drainage system, then it will include this. This section of road as well. I did want to point out, uh, uh, as you discuss the roadway situation, the, the turnaround is, is currently shown on the plan. 
um, they, they actually provided an auto turn plan that shows the, tr the, the emergency vehicle extending past the easement. So the, they, they're turning around the, the emergency vehicle in a driveway, that last driveway, uh, and putting an easement. So that would, it's kind of a unique situation in that um, it would require that that, that person keep that, the end of the driveway free to be able to for emergency traffic. So, so I think uh, that's got to be, uh, I don't know if it's been vetted with the fire department yet, but uh, but that's that's kind of a, a safety issue that should be. The fire chief is here, so we may uh, be able to bring So those up. are the only outstanding issues that I had this time. And that's everything re relative to the stormwater management, correct? Yeah. yeah and the road, actually. Too. And the road, yeah. And the roadway as well. <clears throat> Any other questions for board members to Peter? Through you, Mr. Chair. Phil, can you, Phil, can you speak to the uh, the waivers, requested waivers review? Seems like there's many of them. Fifteen, I think. Um, <clears throat> let me get the page. So these are all uh, items that wouldn't typically be required as part of a subdivision uh, development. Um, I don't know that this would classify as a development. No, I'm not quite sure from an engineering standpoint how this di is different, but anyway, these, these are all required as part of um, a subdivision. Perhaps I was asking the wrong person, Elaine, would you be able to help out, please? So the board um, has to apply the subdivision regulations to the extent possible. For example, if the subdivision regulations require a 50-foot right-of-way, but they only have 30 feet, then that's obviously something you can't impose. But if there's something that can be accommodated, the board can require it. Through the chair, I, I see a bunch on here that we we normally do not do not supply waivers for, like a, above... W9 above ground private utilities. That's not something I would like to approve a waiver on. However, something like W10 street lights, we come, we always uh, allow that waiver. Um, waiver from stormwater management. I don't think we would. I don't know how often we do that. W8, uh, W7 along those sidewalks. I would think you know we could maybe work with the applicant <coughs> and see what's feasible. Um, w6 allowing no turnaround for dead end street that's kind of a seems like a big one to me so that's the, the theme there the, there are there, there's a lot of things there and i think what i'd like to do on that david is be able to work through the public sure. hearing outline and sure. i think those things you know we may be able to incorporate some of those within those discussions okay, okay. To, to this point mr Chair, um i think i don't have it in front of me and i can't get to it quickly does does the outline specifically have a designator for waivers discussion? Because I think we need it to does. add that. It, it, okay. it, it um, does. It um, does. Under the detailed discussion okay. letter number I, it talks Perfect. about waiver requests. Perfect. So we'll, we'll talk about that. So let's see. What page is that on? Mr. Chairman, may I just make a suggestion that since there are two separate applications that are pending and it seems like the stormwater permit application is a separate and distinct application unrelated to the actual construction of the road lake, would it be possible for the board just to simply take that particular stormwater uh, piece first? And yeah. then whatever discussion we need to have rel related to the waivers and the construction of the actual roadway, <laughs> um, those are yeah. completely unrelated to the stormwater management permit. I'll just make that suggestion. Yeah, it, it, it's a fair suggestion. I know they got stormwater baked in to the public hearing outline. Um, so I prefer not to necessarily deviate uh, from the outline because there's different elements in there that could have an impact on that. But I'm open to the board. I'm, I'm not married to it. Um, if, some, if you guys feel strongly to kind of carve this out and just talk about the stormwater management piece, I'll do it. Or we can just follow the outline as it's, as it's been, been listed. I think we should follow the outline. I also think they're very interrelated. Um, you know, some, some to that. So I, I'd agree with that. I think there's general consensus. We'll just work through that. That's uh, it's good. Good suggestion. It's fair. Just to make aware to the chair for everybody, there there is two votes 
Number 10 and number 11 on the agenda, one for each of the two items. There are, right? So vote on the roadway petition and then the vote on the stormwater management permit. They're separate. Alrighty, uh, if there's no other, Karen. I do, I do have a question uh, <coughs> regarding the porous pavement section for the stormwater portion. I know we've talked about that in applications that we've looked at previously and the maintenance of those and that historically, and I'm talking way back when I was on the board before, that those sort of structures fail quite often and I wondered if you could expound as to whether or not there's been a vast improvement in that sort of thing and what sort of maintenance is required to keep that porous section of the roadway functioning in a in a manner that is required to meet the stormwater. So um, it, it depends really on the site conditions whether the f whether it's a typical f a failure situation in a of traffic like typically you wouldn't put it on a in a parking lot in a in a drive aisle you'd put it on the, the parking stalls or, or, or areas like that it does require some maintenance um, in this particular situation I don't I don't know that um, you, you obviously want to avoid sanding the road in the winter um, and and other you know making sure that this this particular section of roadway is raised above the adjacent properties, so it wouldn't be getting flow from from the offsite. So that so that reduces the the chance of a failure as well. So it's just just what falls on the road itself. Um, so it, it's really hard to predict whether it's going to fail today or you know 40 years from now. So it, just as a follow up, is this a is this a fair burden to put on the town to maintain it so that it operates the way that it should, or, or should this be this a homeowner thing, and how do we control it so that it's maintained? Uh, I, I, I can answer. We've proposed the Homeowners Association to maintain uh, the roadway, uh, so there will be no uh, town expense uh, related to the maintenance of this roadway, either the drainage, stormwater, pavement, any of those things. So. Okay, and just one last follow-up. Is, is there a way to tell if that section of roadway is doing what it's supposed to do on an ongoing basis, or does it fail and then you know it's failed? Like, is there any warning sign that says you need to fix this now or, or it's going to be a problem? Because uh, I know that's a particularly soggy section of town. Yeah, well, I don't, I don't expect it to, to solve the drainage issues in the area, but I do expect it to, you know, if, if it's designed and constructed right, I mean, it's designed right, but if it's constructed right and, and, and there's, there's adequate uh, porosity in the pavement, then, um, then you should be able to take a bucket of water and pour it on the pavement. You can tell if it's working. Okay. It's a really easy test. But, but to Carol's question, if I can help you out a little bit on that, to know that it would fail would be if it was crumbling or falling apart or if, the, if ice had gotten underneath <coughs> it and expanded. Those would be the kind. But if the, right, the, but the homeowners association is taking care of That's it. correct. That would be routine maintenance that it's like a pothole or anything else that would be yeah. occurring. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Very good. Any other questions, initial questions from board members before we jump into the outline? Um, so going through the outline, um, the next item for discussion, and this is the detailed discussion section. So each section, and it's A through J, and it covers things like public safety, stormwater management, utilities, uh, layout design, road design. Uh, I'll have uh, ask the applicant for um, some detailed discussion on it, um, a broader discussion from the board, and then I'll open it up to the public. Uh, if, if anybody from the public has a thought or comment on that particular aspect, uh, I'll invite them to come up, you know, state their uh, state their point of view, and we'll incorporate that into further discussion with the board. Um, am I missing anything? Good place. All right, uh, the first detailed item is site visit follow-up. Um, I don't know if there was any specific site visit follow-up. Muriel, can you recall anything? Mm -mm. I don't know. We definitely did trot, trot around that property, yeah. over hill and over dale. 
that was that was, that was fair. I, I don't recall. I don't know if there was any other notes from board members to um, I don't think on so. that piece. So well, we we observed that it was very very wet. It was very wet at the time we visited anyway, yeah. um, and that the. The existing home, the new roadway would come up almost right to their front porch was something we observed on site. I mean, you can see it. Uh, those people at 58 and 62. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. but it's one, the house that is sideways. Yeah. It the most yeah. And, and also, um, there was the mention of the stone wall that was um, 90 degrees to the existing stone wall. There's that, that segment of wall that would be in the way of any development that would need to be moved. Yeah. That, do you call that that part of the conversation? I do remember that. that yeah, uh, well, uh, I think um, uh, the way we view it is we have a right to construct the roadway. Um, we've petitioned the, t the planning board to construct it according to, as uh, Elena said, as closely to your requirements of the subdivision control law as uh, regulations as possible. Um, and that's what we're proposing. It's a variable with 30 foot right of way. Um, the existence of the stone wall is not of any consequence to us. Um, we're gonna we can we can construct the roadway there. So, so go ahead. I historic historic stone walls. If you take out a segment, you need to provide for segments that are equal equal to it. And isn't it a separate petition? <coughs> to a scenic road. But that, that's a scenic road. Uh, it's only a scenic road, not for yeah. breaking it open. It's nice to use the stones, but I don't think it's necessarily required by the applicant. Mm -hmm. The chair? I have, a, I have a question for Elaine. Um, <coughs> previous, previously, we, we voted on whether or not to acknowledge this in a, as a way in existence. And, and how does that um, vote impact our discussion on this tonight? That was a vote that will um, basically deter it determines how you'll vote when he goes to submit an A&R plan to create the lots themselves. So what is before the board right now is the construction of the roadway. And eventually you'll be faced with a plan that would create the lots. And that's where the way in existence argument comes in. He had asked for the determination early on. So that's what you've done. Okay. So, so I guess just so I understand it, and just so everyone else understands it, so we voted to not accept the ways in existence, right. but then even without that support, the applicant can still move forward with a petition to build the road. That's right. It could serve one lot. Okay. Thank you. Just, so just you as. A point of clarification on the, the way of existence. I, I, in looking at the documentation that was presented, I believe there was a road along the back side of the property. I just don't believe it was accessed between the two properties on Pleasant Street, and it was in fact accessed off of Leonard Street. Does that change anything? The applicant has not submitted that. Okay. Through the chair? Through the chair. Um, Frank? And there's outside context to this, too, because he's working, hopefully we'll be working with the abutters uh, to resolve concerns. Uh, it's a private matter. Those are legal concerns between the applicant and the, the abutters. But uh, mm -hmm. the three points that are in the notes are uh, one of them we've, we've addressed already, uh, and the other two are we're discussing. So. It's, it's complex. You okay? Yes. <laughs> uh, anything else before we continue on? Uh, road design. We want to talk about the road design? Well, essentially the road is uh, uh, designed as a rural road. Um, it's constructed in accordance <coughs> to the best, um, most practical standards under your subdiv uh, subdivision rules and regs. Um, it's... it's uh, designed so that the surface runoff is, the road is tilted towards our property and it's collected in the um, individual drainage swales that are then channeled into the stormwater basin. Um, and um, we don't believe that there's sufficient uh, area or width within the right of way to construct uh, the 20 feet of pavement that's proposed and also incorporate sidewalks and other things that uh, typically 
uh, required under your uh, uh, subdivision application. And that's part of the waiver request, correct? That's correct, yes. And that's the same also for the dead end, correct? Correct, yes. Although we are uh, showing uh, that there will be access or potentially access from Maple Street Extension as well as a turnaround for emergency <coughs> vehicles. So, um, so those. And do we have two. a picture of that? Is that the one I'm looking at right there? Bond. Yeah. Well, we show it right adjacent to the detention basin. I don't know what you're looking at. Well, yes, 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 right. We, we show a grading from our proposed roadway um, onto Maple Street Extension. So if there were, there's, there's two situations happening there. One is Maple Street Extension is along Dead End Street with no turnaround as well. Um, from our, our discussions with the fire department was that any kind of connection would be beneficial. If there's an emergency on Maple Street Extension, they would come through our uh, proposed roadway and uh, vice versa if it were the other way around. Good, Chair. Can I kind of pick up where I left off earlier with um, the waivers? Can I just ask the applicant a couple of specific questions? If it's related to road design, I'll yes. allow it. Otherwise, I'll... Yes. Okay. Um, so, can I ask you why you wouldn't put the utilities underground? Well, there's, there's when you... Uh, What's that? It's not road design. Well, there's concerns. Right. Utilities related to road, right? Yeah, it's very <laughs> underground. Oh, you're right. Okay, come on. <laughs> 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 well, you want me to pick up the road again? It was a separate thing. It was a separate line item for utilities. Yeah. Only. But go ahead. Uh, okay. I'll, 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 I'll answer the question. I mean, there's just right. there's a limited amount of space there that's... Um, when you have 20 feet, of, 20 feet of pavement with a 30 foot right of way or thereabouts, uh, and you have shoulders to the roadway, there really isn't a lot of room to uh, install underground utilities. Through the chair. Sure. And I don't understand that yeah, as a valid point under. that utilities are underground, you put it under the street. Excuse me? You put I, the utilities under the street. No. That's what no. all our other developments do. No, the, the utilities that are put in regular subdivisions, they're put in the shoulders of the road. They're not in underneath the pavement. Because you have sewer, water, drainage. Those are th three things that are inside a pavement. So I can refer to the chair to Legacy Road North, where the design, I think where I has already left, but um, straight down the road, and the uh, utilities need to be cemented in, yeah. cased in cement. Yeah, well, so I would... So we've got us. I would, I would just yeah. ask that. Yeah. You're looking to. We're, we're looking to it, but typically, uh, and I, I have to speak with the DPW, but you usually need, uh, when you have sewer and water underground, they usually require a 10 foot separation. Um, so when you have 10 foot separation between sewer and water, and then you have to have separation between your underground electrical, there really isn't a lot of room there. I mean, it uh, becomes. Can I ask uh, you Oh, you want to refer to the other section? I would refer to that. Okay, section. I mean, it's I think there were some others that were related to specifically to the road design um, for the waivers. Sidewalks not considered road, or it is? Um, I'll allow because I don't see it anywhere else on here. Um, so, so the reason I ask these questions is because every other developer in town applies to these these standards, and I was just wondering why you would not like with sidewalks. Well, we, we copied the same application that was applied for by Box Mill uh, Lane on the other side of Leonard Street, and um, they didn't uh, have any sidewalks or any of that stuff. So I think they have underground utilities, though. Correct? Well, they might. I, I don't know. Let's see. Yeah. All right. In, we we simply there. copied their application, basically. So, to David's point, there could be walkways in the right of way of the properties as part of the project. Well, we're dealing with uh, a number of issues here between the conservation commission and the planning board. I mean, cons <laughs> the conservation commission wants us to push the houses closer to the street, and thereby limiting any additional space that you would be referring to as a walkway. Plus, on we have a series of drainage swales along that edge of the roadway that would be on the house where the houses would be built, and there wouldn't be any room for uh, the way the drainage is designed. Everything is drain it wouldn't allow for sidewalks to be constructed on that side of the street. Through the chair, all I heard from that was 
there may not be room. Maybe it's too big. You, you, can, you can see how uh, on the plan, if there were going to be a sidewalk that would be on the side of the uh, where the houses are located, the road sure. is, the road is uh, uh, tilted towards, towards the property so that all of these swales catch the water and directs it into the catch basin. There's a, a, a stone trench that's along the edge of the roadway that facilitates that. There really wouldn't be any, any room to, to construct a five foot wide sidewalk that would be of any benefit, benefit there, so. Again, not any room. Well, we, we only have a 30-foot right-of-way, so. Um, Get it. You look at the other roadways that are in the area, there are no sidewalks on the roadways either. No sidewalks on Leonard Street, Parks Mill, um, that sort of thing, so. Okay. It's a board's decision, you know, we can only do what we can do. Right. I do want to open this section up for public comment. If anybody from the public has any questions regarding road design, um, I'll entertain that. And if there's, and I'll even open it up to maybe some other comments that they have in general, uh, just because I know we're running up against time and I want to make sure that the public has an opportunity to share any of their thoughts with that. So, uh, Ms. Wright. Clay Wright, 28 Hayden Row. Um, relative to the roadway design and the stormwater, I just would like to have absolute assurance from the developer that with reference to the permeable pavement, that this is indeed going to be taken care of by the Homeowners Association. I heard two different things. I heard the gentleman to my right refer to that, but then earlier, and it may have been Mr. Paradis, who is working for the town, so he, you know, um, maybe he misspoke. I heard it said, that this was going to be on the DPW. Um, I want to make absolutely certain that where this development is relying partly on the permeable pavement to meet some of their stormwater requirements, that the maintenance for this not be on the town's DPW, which is what I heard. And um, that type of maintenance, this permeable roadway is going to fail not before the pavement falls apart, it will fail in the sense that it will get clogged with dirt and sand in New England unless it's maintained. There has to be a maintenance schedule that is every bit as important as the maintenance schedules for all the other parts of stormwater infrastructure, whether it's catch basins or um, infiltration basins. The Homeowners Association has to, has to include regular cleanings of that permeable pavement or very quickly it will not work and the slippery slope of developers starting to meet part of the stormwater requirements by putting in permeable pavement and then possibly putting that on the town is completely not acceptable. So I just want to make, make sure that it is going to be part of the Homeowners Association documents and there is going to be a maintenance schedule which is not paid for by the town but paid for by the homeowners. Thank you. Uh, I think to Ms. Wright's point, the opportunity to have a condition around the maintenance schedule and review the Homeowners Association prior to final approval probably makes sense <coughs> at this point. Uh, Chief, <coughs> welcome. Good evening. Hey, Chief, how, how are you? <coughs> um, I think everything's been covered in the comments, but I just wanted to review as far as the roadway if it did make the connection, and I think we said Maple Street Extension we're talking about, is that? Mm -hmm. So um, that is the first choice in any of the plan development that I'm looking for is a, a through way. Uh, absent of that, then I mentioned that the, a cul-de-sac is the next thing we have in our bylaws. So that's what I normally deal with. Um, I think after that, I think we have some discussion in public safety. Many of the other aspects of the road um, are meet the bylaw, the 20 foot width, the fact that we have um, water supply down the road, those are all positive. But um, I think I'm still kind of waiting. I didn't know what the end was here. First choice is a throughway design. I can't remember the length to the end, excuse me, but I know in our bylaw we look at 500 feet as kind of 
the length on a dead end. So I don't, yeah. I'm drawing a blank so on what that number was. It's, it's, it's probably close to 600, right? Or 700? Seven, it could be in that area all the way to the end, yeah. So there's a couple <coughs> pieces here that we would normally have some dialogue to say, how do we make up for that? I told you the positive pieces are the width and the fire protection. Yep. The negative is the length into a dead end road if, if we can't make the extension. And then the fact that uh, the first choice in that dead end is a cul-de-sac. A second choice would be a hammerhead. A hammerhead into a driveway is something I haven't had to face yet, but the number of driveways isn't extreme. When we're talking, that's when I do my risk calculation, I'm trying to figure out how many units we need to access and move from. Um, and, that, and then one of the pieces I've brought to you, I don't know if this rises to the occasion, but that's when you can talk about different type of fire protection alternatives. I, and I just feel like it's almost early for me to suggest something because I don't know what the end is yet. So no. we've had some of that dialogue together. Right. One I, last okay. piece I could add, and I think I'm done on the roadway, would be when you have a, this permeable surface, um, I've had some challenges getting engineers to say that it will sustain and carry our emergency vehicles. So I just that's a challenge that any, any of these ones that I turn to the engineer and really make sure that somebody is stamping that it will under all conditions, carry our vehicle. So, yeah. thanks. Yeah, thank thank you. you, Chief. Bill, is that something that can be addressed now, or is that something that we would need some further? Oh, I can ask my paper guys. Right. That comes to mind pretty quickly. I, I, I don't know that there's a huge significance to this triangle. All right. So it's a, a follow-up. I'd like to be able to see that. Um, Carol. Carol? Just, uh, yeah, sorry, just a couple of questions. You keep mentioning access from Maple Street extension. What is the, the <laughs> reality of that ever yeah. becoming a yeah. possibility? Or is well, that just a... Uh, well, we're working with the uh, homeowners at the end of uh, Maple Street extension, and I think there's um, possibilities that that could happen. Um, I think uh, there are a number of things that um, are in the mix in terms of that discussion. And I'd rather not. I'd rather not get into that in a public session at this point. But we're 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 showing it as uh, as an access, um, but not a paved access at this point. I think there's been discussion about making it maybe a gate, gated access, um, or just for emergency vehicles only access, not for through traffic access. So those are some of the parameters that we're talking about at this point. Uh, just we, we did, we're, and we also are showing, as the chief said, uh, we're showing a hammerhead turnaround using uh, the last driveway within the development. There's only four houses being proposed, so it's not, um, wouldn't consider it to be a significant problem turning a one, uh, you know, emergency vehicle in and, in and around in that location. Okay, just two comments from my, my perspective. Yeah. It, it changes the discussion substantially if you can use that access one way or the other, whether it's emergency or not. When you're talking about a 700-foot dead end, that's totally different to me than having emergency access to it. Mm -hmm. Just I'm just throwing that out there as a point of, of the waiver. And the other point that I want to make is, is the town, as a town, is spending millions of dollars to put utilities underground and I don't think that we have permitted any new developments where we've allowed utilities to go in above ground. And that ultimately seems to be our goal as a town is to get that stuff underground. So I am reluctant to say it's okay to put your utilities overhead. That's just my opinion. Well, so again, it's the board's decision. We request the waivers because we think it's consistent with what's in that general area. It's above ground utilities on Lennon Street, above ground utilities on Pleasant Street. There was above ground utilities on Buckland Street. There's two utility poles there now. So um, we think it's a reasonable request. Whether or not the board supports that, I, it's really the board's decision. Okay. Very good. Um, Phil, last comment. Just a follow up. If you, if you can put the section. So uh, if, you, if you can see the. The section there, the roadway section, you, you shoot, you see the road, uh, 
On the right is the water. In the center is the, uh, well, both of the left, left of center is the sewer. And then you've got that whole area left of that. If you really want to put A, a the, some, uh, a narrow sidewalk and or indoor utilities. Some options. I just have one question on that, and I'm, yeah. I'm curious because the the stormwater trough there, and it, you know, is, is 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 it an option to put that underground and then put a sidewalk on top of it so that you wouldn't need to request a waiver from the sidewalks? Well, those uh, basins are on private prop on the lots themselves, not within the right of way. So, okay, you consider a sidewalk would have to be within the right of way, and that's what we're dealing with in terms of your regulations. You, in other words, your regulations pertain to the construction of the way, which the way is the 50 foot, or in this case, 30 feet. <coughs> that's, what that's what we're. But these lots don't exist now, correct? Well, uh, at least one lot exists. One lot exists. Just a, uh, so, no, I'm not going to allow it, um, okay. David, unfortunately. I need to move on. Okay. Um, Lou, I think there's some things. I think Carol brings up a good point. Oh, Mr. Barbieri. I'm waiting patiently here. Oh, we get the last sorry. word. Here you go. Please state your name and your address uh, for the record. Peter Barbieri, uh, Attorney Fletcher Tilton. I represent the, the mayors and in, in the Bloomberg's who are, as you know, on opposite sides of, of the entry on Pleasant Street. When we were here in January, uh, I raised the question of the cross section you're looking at there because it didn't seem to match that first section of Pleasant Street. And what I was told was that is not the first section of Pleasant Street profile. We we asked for a cross section of the area from Pleasant Street to the applicant's property because that profile is a lot bigger than that. You can see the drainage well on the side of that profile. That does not fit within the layout being alleged of Buckland Street from Pleasant Street for the first roughly 200 feet back. So we asked for a profile of that section because you can't put underground utilities in there because it's even narrower than that 30 feet. So we asked for that. We also asked for a plan of blow up of the drainage and the whole grading of that area. Uh, we've now seen two revisions since that date and we're still looking at a comment from your consultant that says um, the pro profile needed to be some grading between them. New, new roadway doesn't show grading uh, and shows everything drainage sloping to the south, which is directly onto a client's property. Uh, so I think we need a profile of that first section. I think you can read the drainage as requested from that first section. I don't think it should be left to uh, include a condition that there has to be positive drainage, it should be shown that there's positive drainage. And that shouldn't be a very difficult thing for the engineer to do. Um, we also have concerns from your consultant's comment from the viewpoint of uh, the previous pavement. I agree with all the comments made before. Uh, when you talk about full homeowners having the association, I don't think you pass that off to say, documents to be approved. I think you need those as part of this review. I think you need a full budget as part of that review. Uh, homeowners associations are generally good if you're talking 20, 30 lots. You start getting into small lots. Nobody wants to take the time to be a trustee of these things, and it's going to fall by the wayside. We, we've heard about, you know, well, this is a standard waiver and everything else. It, it's not. I mean, this road's through that for a section. I would request that you ask for a specific waiver item by item given the fact that the plans have changed so many times, uh, both as to the cross section of the second piece as well as the cross section of the first piece. Uh, there's no sidewalks, there's no underground utilities, there's nothing to meet your standards. My fear in anything you do is that you're going to grant waivers for these two items and then you're going to see the applicant back here for a definitive subdivision plan and saying, you approved all my waivers. You have to let me build this road to service these four lots. In January, you made a decision that this was not a way in existence. I think we were told an approval not required plan would be filed so there could be something to appeal. That hasn't been done. I would ask that you continue this hearing to get definitives of the grading, get definitives of the, the, the budget in the homeowners association, uh, in DPW acceptance, uh, as referenced in those three items as referenced in my letter. 
uh, and that if the board goes ahead and approve everything, that one of the conditions being no construction be done until there's approval to build the lots. I would not want to see him getting a stormwater permit and go out there and cutting down all the trees and doing everything and then ultimately not get approval to build a lot. Why is that in the interest in the town, in the neighbors? If there's going to be an approval, all the approval should be placed and nothing, no construction should take place until such time as whatever final determination is made. So I would request that you continue to hear and get the engineering details as referenced in those three items by the consultant, uh, but also look at a situation of limiting any approval should you decide to give one. Uh, the, no construction until such time as approval of the four lots is done because otherwise again you're going to see a request for waiver saying you already granted all these waivers you've got to approve my subdivision plan Mr. thank you thank you yeah, may i just I give the applicant the last minute just, just just quickly first of all um if if we don't develop the lots we don't really need a stormwater management permit it's going to be it's under the forty-four thousand square feet or under the one acre we can we can go in there today and build that roadway. We don't need anyone's permission. We don't need the planning board's permission. We can build the roadway to whatever standard we want. The reason why we're here tonight or have been in this process is because we want, when the roadway is built, we want that roadway to be in accordance with your rules and regulations so that in the event of an ANR plan is submitted, that, that mm -hmm. those lots will be on a way that is Mm -hmm. uh, have suitable width grades and so on as required by the law. So what Mr. Barberi is suggesting is, uh, is a lot of uh, uh, nonsense as far as I'm concerned. I mean, we, we, can, we have the right to go and build that roadway today and we don't need a stormwater management permit and so on and so forth. So when we get permission to do the lots, if we get permission f uh, to build on the lots, we want what we're building to be consistent with what the planning board would grant us as far as the stormwater management permit and uh, the roadway construction. Yeah, I appreciate that. I think we're going through the right process and the right steps here, taking public feedback and input, discussing it on the board, and we'll go through what we have done in the past to make sure we're following the right procedures, looking at waivers and conditions, et cetera. Yeah. So, I mean, I can't force that. the board to grant the waivers. I the know. board is, has the discretion to grant them or not grant them, but you know, we're here in good faith trying to do the best we can with the project. We all are, as and we all are. Um, so, next opportunity for Mr. Pedrosi. Yeah, May 13th. May 1-3. It's May the last one. meeting before the election. May 13th. Mm -hmm. If the applicant's willing to grant an extension. So, I'm, I'm kind of curious, what are, we, what are we asking for as far as this continuance? I mean, we've... As far as I know, from the review that's been completed by Beta, that we've complied with all of their... So we haven't gone through the entire um, the working agenda. Uh, the public hearing outline, I think it's a courtesy to the members of the public as well as ourselves to make sure we're touching base on all these. I think there were things that, even with the fire chief, I'm not 100% clear that it's already it's, it's, it's done. So I'm 100% clear it's not quite done. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Okay. So uh, May 13th? If the applicant's willing to grant an extension of time. So I'm um, just, again, I want to, I'm curious, I'm, I want to know what Im additional information we, as the applicant, are required to, or should be providing. I think looking at <laughs> Other the, than what we've already provided is the We're going to go through the outline. Maybe we've provided, provided all the information, which is great. But I don't think the board, and I'll speak only for myself, I'm not comfortable uh, making any type of determination at this point, having not gone through all the different elements on the so if we were to continue just the petition uh, to construct the roadway and proceed with the stormwater management permit, which I believe is we're in compliance with all the regulations. All right, do they need our approval for that? Do they need the board's approval for yes. it? Mm -hmm. So there's two applications, one of right. which is the... So, I mean, so we're not ready, I'm not ready to vote on anything tonight. Okay. All right, well, we'll continue one more time. Fair enough. All right. I'd just like the record to state that this board has continued for the applicant a number of times. It's true. I didn't think about just that. want to make that record, um, put that on the record. Uh, 7.30? Is that open? 9 o'clock. 9. Nine. Nine. Public hearing at 7.30 on Whisper Way. Okay. So assuming you want to give them more than an hour, 9 o'clock. Awesome. 9 o'clock. Thank you, Mr. Petrosi. 9 o'clock. 
Nine o'clock. Uh, do I need to make a? I'll, I'll the, move that. Second. Much. With the decision due. With the decision due. <coughs> Before the election? It's May 13th, so it'll be the decision due um, by May 24th. What's the decision Before due Memorial Day? May 24th. May, May 24th. All right, so it's been a motion and seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, all those abstain. All right, thank you very much. One, one question, is there an election in between now and May 13th or no? Okay. no the next after. The week after. Okay. So. It's May 20th. Thank you. Thank you. Very much, Colby. I'll send you an email. Um, okay, so we need to get through a few things here. Um, I am. I know we need to go back to some of the um, zoning bylaw amendments. I would like to possibly, if we could fit it in beforehand, um, do. Where do I have it here? Um, Mr. Mezit and his uh, A&R request. If we can do that. Hopefully, it'll be quick. Knock on wood, famous last words, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Do I have an index number on that? Or? Uh, this is page nine at the beginning, a and our plan, 110, uh, I'm sorry, 10 Linden Street. Also, it's for the 200. 200. Yeah, I could just make a general comment while they're getting set up. Yes. Um, we feel like we've had a, 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 a surge in last minute materials coming in mm -hmm. and, and I'd just like to make a request formally that, that if people have comments or materials or changes that those get submitted um, on the Thursday deadline so that we have time to review them because I mean we're getting showing up with stuff that's written at the meeting doesn't give us time to review it and so I just want to make sure that yeah I mean, it, that's general, a fair point we, we really started forcing that I mean I, you know we should almost give that material back to the people that submit it um, I think that we we do enforce it, but it's, a, it's an excellent point. I mean, yeah, I agree. We can't keep people from making comments at the meeting, but it is it's certainly within our purview to uh, take the time to digest it fully. I'm wondering if we're publicizing that well enough for people, members of the public, may not necessarily know when our packet deadline is. So maybe we could communicate that better. Is there anything on the website that we could put out there that says we're submitting anything? Okay, we'll continue. No, my that would be, that might go a long way. I'm pretty sure it's not on there. <laughs> All right, uh, this is an a r plan. Um, this is not a public hearing, correct? That's correct. Yes, so uh, Mr. Meza and team were here last meeting, I believe, providing an overview. Maybe we just, let's pick it up and what changes, because uh, there was some discussion at that point. Two minutes. Sure. Uh, as you may recall, Peter Mezzet uh, owns number 10 and would like to extend Linden Street, uh, which is currently a gravel driveway, circa 2000, to reach what will become number 12, uh, a new home site where he hopes to, to build a, a home for himself uh, and his wife. We have an existing uh, gravel driveway um, that in some spots is only 10 foot wide. So we have uh, proposed to upgrade that to a uniform 12-foot wide surface with a two-foot wide shoulder on either side to get the 16-foot <coughs> wide envelope, if you will, to access down to the site. Um, it fits well with the grades through there. It has implications for um, some of the existing trees that are there. We uh, had a, a couple of sessions with the fire chief with regard to the design of the driveway to uh, prove out the access for the ladder truck and emergency vehicles to the site. And we are providing a turnout to facilitate the passing of vehicles and uh, a T-type turnaround for the fire truck at the end of uh, the upgrade that will allow access to uh, Peter's home should there ever be a need and still allow the chief to, uh, to back out the vehicle and, and leave the site. And all that is contained on site plans that are currently before the commission and that we have forwarded to the uh, to planning board. All right, Chief, would you like to maybe come on up and provide some insight? Good evening again. Um, so in evaluating this site, it was, um, it had several challenges. It's um, one way in all the way from East Main Street. Um, it has some narrowing of the access <coughs> that was challenging. Um, 
there's no water main going down the road that would supply a fire hydrant. Um, so it had a few more challenges in us in the sense of public safety. And that's where kind of we had some talk about some of the options to uh, make up the uh, fire protection element is we talked about a 13D system in the home and the applicant was very, I uh, gave him some literature to review. And my understanding is um, he was uh, amenable to that. And that's kind of a national standard option um, when you have some of these challenges that you can't uh, overcome. So um, in that evaluation, I'm comfortable that uh, in my eyes for the public safety piece, the ambulance can access good, the fire trucks can access good, the narrowness creates a challenge. If we lay a supply line in, then no more fire trucks can get in there. And that's where this 13D system gives them the life safety protection um, in the home. And uh, we'll get the fire out before we get there, hopefully. But if not, the first company will go in and finish the job up and uh, they'll be safe. And uh, the ambulance, like I said, in these conditions will do well. So with the number, the only question I had is the, um, if there was going to be a big development past that, that would kind of change the plan. But it sounds like um, my understanding is that, you know, worst case scenario, there might be uh, something that one or two, something that the neighbors may have. So I don't see that roadway changing in any great thing in my evaluation. So I'll leave that up to you to determine. I have a question on that. Um, and maybe it's for Lane, maybe it's for you, I don't know. But um, would it preclude the development of additional houses, this, this sort of hybrid arrangement to satisfy this particular need? So like in the risk equation, if you were going to tell me that there was a potential for um, a dozen or more homes, let's just say past that, then the narrow road would worry me a lot in the risk equation. If, it's, if it is only one or two and it didn't and sound like if that's the case, it would be challenging, I think you just have the same discussion and talk about the same options if they come in front of us. Mm -hmm. um, in, the, in light of what I know, and the potential is only one or two, uh, I think it's a fair conversation like we're having now. Interesting. Any other comments or questions from board members to the chief? I want to thank the chief for the, the, a lot of extra effort he puts into our town to keep it safe. Thanks. All right. Um, thank you, chief. I think there's nothing else. Um, questions? I just have one question based on yeah. his comments, but I mean, we're only considering this right now to add one additional lot, correct? That's so right. the comments about more potential lots, that I don't feel like that necessarily applies here because what's being proposed is only the creation of one additional lot. Is that a fair assumption, Elaine? Uh, someone would have to come back if they were going to create lots on the other side, they'd come back to this board. And it can't be extended further. Legacy Farms is beyond here, so it can't go any further. Questions, anything else from the board? Any other updates that you guys want? I mean, the chief was pretty good. I will make um, a note here for the board. Um, you know, after the discussion, we'll take the following votes. We can vote on a motion uh, to make a finding that the proponent, a proposed street will provide sufficient width, suitable grades, adequate construction to provide for the need of vehicular traffic in relation to the proposed use of the budding land and for the installation of municipal services to service the land and buildings. Uh, if we vote to, uh, on the motion to make the finding as a no, then the board would have to vote on a motion to deny the endorsement of the plan for that reason. If the vote on the motion to make the finding is a yes, then the board would vote on a motion to endorse the plan citing the finding. So I'll, I'll raise it up to the board, given what the chief has told us. Uh, is there general consensus that the width grade uh, construction of the current uh, road as is because they're not going to change it um, is adequate to address any type of ambulatory fire needs as expressed affirmative well they are going to change it a little they bit are gonna they're going to change, change it yeah. a little yeah. bit but it's not going to be 20 feet right? no, no, no it's going to go it's going to be a little wider yeah you know a little bit shorter on both and and just to confirm if there's if they utilize the land on the other side of the street it needs to come back as it as a Additional A and R. It would be another A and R to be creating a lot. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, uh, no other comments. I will entertain a motion to uh, find that the proposed proposed street will provide sufficient width, suitable grade, and adequate construction 
uh, for the needs of vehicular traffic relative to the proposed use of the abutting land and for the installation of municipal services to service the land and the buildings. So moved. Second. Discussion. Discussion. Do we also need to include in this finding the requirement for the additional fire protection that the chief mentioned? The 13D. Yeah, the 13D. Is that, the, yeah. Um, because it sounds like that's part of his consideration for yeah, allowing supporting okay. the street um, as designed. That's a fair point. Can we? It feels like accept the friendly thing. amendment. It feels like a condition more than anything. But um, I mean, we could do the friendly. But amendment. it would also serve as a reminder if anything ever comes back on the other side. I think it's fair, right? So, so it's not a condition; it's a finding. So you can do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So we'll add it. Um, so most uh, making a finding that with the addition of the 13 with the addition of the 13 13 right. that, that provides yes. sufficient access yes. okay. so there's been a motion it's been seconded discussion any further discussion further discussion just further discussion. Discussion. Applicant, a quick question sure um under the anr we don't have any control over underground utilities but just out of curiosity would you guys be adding more utility poles and how many the expectation is one to reach the the lot Approximately me that 70 odd feet to get to our large corner and then on the ground to the home. Thank you uh, Further discussion No, just does it reference the improvements that they said they were going to make to make it 12 feet we reference the plan the pl okay. Okay. Perfect uh, All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye aye all those opposed All those abstain so passes um, Do we then need to vote Elaine on the motion to endorse the plan? Yes so I'll entertain so a motion. Moved. So moved. Second. Se Second. <laughs> discussion. No discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Pain. <coughs> so passes. All right, gentlemen. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving to the list. All right, so I am uh, woefully behind, gentlemen and ladies. Zoning. Back to zoning. Back to zoning. Um, we have three left. Do we want to take the easiest? Let's see is or, easy. or do we want to go? Which one is the easiest? <laughs> uh, that's a eeny, meeny, miny. Um, let's do indoor recreation if we could. Okay. So indoor, rec indoor, indoor recreation is number four in your packets. We already voted on that. Yeah, we did that. We one. did? Why we is did that? that? Didn't, it didn't take a vote. We didn't vote? We no. didn't? Go for Pete's sake. Oh. No. Okay, well, well that could be, that could you be don't recreation. We, no, that's the Zach vote. Um, okay, well, indoor recreation uses. So, so it had to be re-advertised because the board decided to allow it by special permit in industrial A and to make no change to B. So you added the special okay. permit, so it had to be re-advertised. Okay. okay. So, basically, we're saying we're going to add it by special permit to industrial A. That's it. And I think we all supported that. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we all did support that. And so it was just a matter of re-advertising. So. All right. Which we did. So I will then uh, entertain a motion to support the indoor recreation use industrial A and industrial B districts. So moved. moved. By special permit. By special permit. Do we need to clarify it? No one's been public is here. Ah, well, I, don't think they, I don't think they are, but. Any okay. public comment? Thank you very much for <coughs> being honest. Uh, it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? All right, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, all those abstain. So passes. Ta -da. Uh, Commercial solar photovoltaic installations. Okay, so two. we made a few wording changes, and that had to do with um, adding um, the year-round screening, year-round effective year-round screening, right? And then adding um, a measure about the um, earth burning as another potential way to uh, go about it. What page is this? This is 140. 170. Thank oh. you. I couldn't find Mine it. Mine is 146, sorry. Um, so, so other than that, you know, we did discuss it last time, uh, or February 25th. Didn't so, yeah, so we yeah, can I just take see, a vote. I, in the writing, I don't see anything about the berming. I don't think, see it in, at, at the end there. That was additional 
wording, right? Yeah, well, there's additional wording beyond what. In and I don't see it there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, we have not redrafted that. Oh, okay. Until the board votes. So. Got it. So is this taking into account any changes from council as well? Didn't have any recommended. I think I'm just looking well, at it now. It's pretty clean. Well, town council Wouldn't says they be considered landscaping. We, yeah, we we did, we did discuss that <laughs> that it, it is landscaping, but we wanted to emphasize it. But it's okay. yeah, more like earth movement. So discussion earth. just never came to a conclusion as to what changes you wanted to make. Well, okay. Can I through the chair? Mm -hmm. yes, Town Council says that we're not clear on what the required screening is supposed to protect. Does it protect from a distance, from high elevations, from public ways, from adjoining properties? I think that's where we got stuck last time. But it's really virtually impossible to protect it from all angles. Yeah. I think, we, and we were all going to drive by Alexander Road and see what that one looked like, which I have done a few times now. And I can't really think of anything that would be effective to screen that. Yeah. So I think a little bit of thinking that that I did, if I can jump in, I did drive around Alexander Road, um, and it doesn't have. In, in the non-foliage season, it doesn't have the screening that I sort of had in my mind would be um, available from the natural vegetation because they did not ask for any waivers from, uh, to the best of my recollection, there's no waivers from their, uh, the buffer zones. Um, so I think that it makes a great deal of sense that we have to at least ensure that there is some sort of screening uh, at like street level at least. We can't go from every, I don't think we can cover every elevation, um, but to be standing in the property directly abutting it, looking at it, it ought to be screened from view. From ground level? Sure. Yeah, that's my thinking. But I think it's taken care of in the terminology it says reasonable. You know, I think there, if we use the terminology that says reasonable, each case scenario will define that. I would, would it be a little bit more specific. Yeah, it, it, and the only reason I say that is because we thought it was reasonable as we were trotting right. around the, the Lumber Street one. We all, we, we, we all walked that property. We all worked hard to do a great job. Mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, Without without additional intentional vegetative screening, I, I think I think you need to have something screened. six to eight feet. I do too. Around the around the perimeter of the facility. It, I think it depends vastly on on what the site does. If the site goes up, the screening requirement is different than if the site slopes down. Yeah, it's and like Wilson the, Street. The language as it was written in the original bylaw just says effective screening. Yeah. yeah. And. That that was the problem. What's and that's what we tried to address is what is effective in July is not necessarily what's effective in January. And and the whole site plan review and looking at screening and all of that is so very subjective depending on what the site is that I don't think you can you can say from the street because the street is not necessarily the problem at site B where it may be at site A. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think the whole site plan review process is very subjective. I think the purpose of this was to, to make it year-round as opposed to just mm -hmm. six months out of the year and to give the planning board a little bit more teeth to mandate screening for whatever the planning board felt was effective for a particular site. So we've got the language in there that says effective year-round screening. Uh, I think the question is that Council brings up is from where? From abutting properties, from public ways, higher elevations. Ray says, looks for clarification on that point in the bylaw language. Right. So, I mean, the most immediate one would be any type of abutter, clearly, I would think. Well, you know, it, a residential abutter to me. I mean, a, That's what I mean. an industrial yeah. abutter. Right, no, it was an actual part, but yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's others, right? That's probably the first one that comes to mind, mm -hmm. but there's absolutely others. Uh, <coughs> this is just my take. My concern is as we get more specific that if we don't include something, then that can be used to say, well, this isn't actually included. So personally for me, I, while I realize that it gives, it maybe isn't as 
specific, I actually like the way it's written because it gives us the ability to assess it. It gives us the ability to, to assess it based on the slope and the butters and whatnot. So I, I actually prefer the way it's written. Okay, I'm, I'm okay with that. I, I would concur. I think you need to leave it open and I think you need to leave each case open to adjudication because the one that I was most involved with was Wilson Street. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, even vastly, there were vastly different relationships between the upside neighbors, the downside neighbors, those next to wetlands. And, you know, I think it was a very complicated formula. And um, I think we need to weigh each one and try to do the best. And I think the more open-ended and uh, sort of, I think it gives you that, that um, a little bit of teeth gives you a little bit more control and I think that's what Carol was, was speaking for um, so I would concur with the way it's written so we have gone full circle on this um, I mean the proposed change language I think covers what you're looking at effective forming effective year-round screening without getting too prescriptive um, on that so I will entertain a motion to um, adopt the proposed language change for commercial solar photovoltaic installation. Would that include the insertion of earthen berms in that second, in the last sentence? Yes. Did I say it in my I say yes. Yeah. yeah. Sure, why not? That was our consensus last time. Um, any comments from the general public on photovoltaic? It's hard to say, isn't it? It is. I know it's getting <laughs> late, too. Um, <laughs> Is there a motion or no? So moved. Second. So moved and second. Thank you for the discussion. All right, hearing none, um, how do you vote? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. All those abstain? So passes. So the last one, the one we're all waiting for. No, there's, there's three more. Why do I have on the list? I only have one more. Okay, the Osmond Overlay District. We have residents oh, of age restricted it, one dot. housing. Yes. Right, age restricted, live in housing. Okay, so, would the live in managers be easier? Do we want to do the live in managers first? I just have this in front of me. So. If you have the managers in front of you, let's do it. Okay, residents of age restricted housing. Okay, so, um, the Osmond was, was amended in, I don't know what date, um, to allow the, the senior housing development of 180 dwelling units, which was to include um, some um, affordable housing units as well. And according to town council, it's been a fairly recent change in Massachusetts laws that does not allow for an age restriction on affordable housing units. So this is our dilemma. We have to change it somehow to make it work with Massachusetts law. Several options were developed and the question is do we want to send all these options to town meeting or do we want to send <coughs> only some of them <laughs> but we need to we need to send something to town meeting all right because it has to be changed there's there's one proposal that would simply remove the age restriction on the legacy farms north heritage properties 180 dwelling units right so that would remove the age restriction uh, the age restriction of children that would remove the pro it would remove the prohibition of school children. yes it would remove the prohibition of school children yes okay but Sorry. not the age restriction from correct. the development correct no it would still have the 55 plus has to be you know one person 55 plus but it would remove the restriction of, of <coughs> under the age of 18. Um, in all 180 units. In all 180, yeah. So, and that would then, the um, affordable housing would still be included in those 180. Um, and that is the only situation in which we can have the affordable housing in that 180, is if we remove that under 18 restriction, okay? I, I know that Elaine will, will jump in if I say anything wrong. <laughs> so, um, another option is to uh, remove the affordable housing requirement within those 180 and 
and in that case, we can um, have a payment in lieu to the fund that we have in town for affordable housing, mm -hmm. such that the town has the money to create affordable housing units as it sees fit. And what was the other option? There was a third option. I'm probably downgrading it. Do you remember? But we don't have to accept a payment, right? We, we could require them to... Build it someplace else? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Is that the third option, I think? But, the, but that there was... But it wasn't possible to build it someplace else within Legacy because it was all built out. That was my understanding. And does it have to right. be within have to Legacy? It would have, it have to, to be someplace else. Someplace, someplace else. But that's... Right. That's an option, though. Yes. Yes. Can I ask a question? Is that... Um, all is that... A, because Legacy North hasn't been proposed yet, or that other section of Legacy North hasn't been proposed yet, so you can't push your affordable to something that's not... Yep, so they're at the cap. They're, all, they're at the, the limit of permit. Even the section that's not built? Right, So, but it's right. all permitted, so this board is permitted. Permit. The plan for okay. that. So. If they were, maybe this is a question more for Elaine, if they were to remove or take option two, remove the affordable housing designation there, how many units would be lost? 18. 18. So there'd be 18. 18. And then how does that impact our overall percentage for the town? Are we still above? Well, so the 180 units that's there comes into the town's denominator of right. 10%. So you're adding um, 180 units without <coughs> that 10% that goes with it. Exactly. That's a big number. But my question is, do we know what impact? Are we still going to be under the threshold? And I don't know. Roy, maybe you know that. Sorry. Come on up. clarification, we went to Delaware City Farms. It's my understanding that the only thing that you're doing this restriction on is the 18 units, not the other 162. Can you come up no. here? I can't really hear what he's saying. And I, I know that. This microphone's not for you, but yeah. It's okay. <laughs> That's not true. But the people at home Allergies can. to that. That's what I mean. That's the one. Yeah. Peter can clarify this further, but it's my understanding that the only thing you're, I think you need to, I believe you need to vote two things. One, if you get to get a re restriction no matter what, because that's frankly now illegal. But I believe the only thing that you're changing is on the affordable units, because the rest of the development, the remaining 162 units, will still be age-restricted units. And as uh, Mr. Gately will tell you, he has agreements with the people who are buying units there that, in fact, those units are going to be restricted because I don't think that the state has much to say about that because you're not asking them to be accounted to for any numbers in ter as far as affordable goes. I think as long as that restriction is in the master deed, the state will not certify right. those units. That's, that's what will I not what? Not certify not those, those, unit, those affordable units. No, no, I'm not talking about the affordable. I'm talking about the 162. Right, but they all have the same master deed. No, I understand that, but the question is, if you lift it on the, that's a good point, you may have to have a separate deed, but I think, number one, you have to lift the restriction, but I think you need to have another means and method, and again, Peter will get into it with Vin, you need to have another means and method for the developer to qualify something, whether it's giving money to a fund that eventually you could build affordable housing elsewhere or something, but it, it, right now it's, offset that. yeah, I'll let Peter pick it up. Barbier? Why not? Come on in. Good evening again. Clarify. Uh, Peter Barbier, Fletcher Tilton for Heritage. Uh, it, you know, as you would anticipate when the approvals came in, everything has moved forward. Uh, the mass of the deed has been approved and everything else. Financing has been obtained based upon your buyer and the decision which has this age-restricted issue. Um, the property has been marketed that way. We have buyers who bought because of that situation. So we understand the predicament that the state has put everybody in as a result of saying these units don't qualify. Um, it, it seems to me there's two things. One, talking about legacy farm within the OSMD, and I don't know what your bylaw says. You know, if other seniors come forward, you might want to take that out of restriction for future for them. But from the viewpoint of our, our point of view, we're kind of stuck with that at this stage of the game because we get buyers who bought into that and that's what they want. So uh, we want to work with you to come up with something. We think the payment in lieu is probably the best approach. 
uh, and we've been trying to look at numbers and do everything, and, and given the hour and the time frame you do, that kind of suggestion is maybe you can appoint a subcommittee where we all can sit down and go through the numbers, because right now the way the bylaw is written, well, first it talks about a three-bedroom unit price that we would pay to the town. Now, these are two-bedroom units, so I think that's an easy fix, and I would hope you would agree to that. If we're only building a two, we wouldn't pay the town for a three. Uh, and then secondly, it's just the question of what that amount is. We're not, based upon the numbers we've got so far, in a position in, in the discussions that, that uh, Vince People has had with the state is they're putting a figure of 208500 on the sale of a two-bedroom senior thing that we're building. So the, the numbers don't work out financially. We can say, okay, we'll give the town 208500 dollars and then that's your affordable unit. You can go do whatever you want, your trust fund and everything else, and then have the cost of replacing that unit. And we're talking about at this stage of the game, which the state has agreed to, the middle units of the triplexes. Um, and, and then having to build that unit, and again, and, and you're going to build it a little bit better than the other ones, and, and we're over what we sell that unit for. So that's our predicament, and, and we think with a, with a group of people we can come up with numbers, hopefully, to make that work where you do a payment in lieu. But the, the way it's written now from the viewpoint of giving you a straight cash for an affordable unit and then having to construct another market unit, what we sell it on doesn't work. So I, I, our hope is that we can sit down between now and two weeks with some folks and, and look at numbers and come up with a with a, a scenario. Framingham has used the percentage of the building permit fee, and, and you know that's one option. Elaine, oh. I'll ask Elaine and then Muriel. Yeah. I'm looking over here, but I'm pointing over there. Oh. I was just maybe looking for some clarification. If you have a question that would be further, I don't mind if you go to Elaine first. You don't want to go to Elaine. <laughs> no. I, oh, you don't mind? I thought you should be doing it. Sure, I just... Right? <laughs> Wait, you're up. You're up. What was the question? So, just in terms of what Mr. Barbieri is proposing, is this something that, you know, as we discuss it here, would be, that would be amenable that we could take to, to the town meeting? You could um, continue to look at some... or refining the payment in lieu if you wanted to go ahead and propose a payment in lieu option. Um, the language, of course, can be modified at town meeting as long as you're within the scope of the article. So you would put something in that, you know, you wouldn't want to go higher than that. You'd want to come down. Mm -hmm. But you could certainly discuss it. But you'd have, to, you'd have to come up with some language now to go into the warrant. What's well, in the warrant as you originally submitted it, but... It's different. You have to make some changes. You have to make some changes. Muriel. Yes, I'd like to make a couple points. Um, first of all, he, he doesn't have to replace units, right? No, so no. we're not obligated to, to make that softer or easier, right? Um, and I have a, um, a, a philosophical um, preference for asking developers to actually do the work that they do better than the town will ever do it and replicate the units in town. And I'd like to just be a proponent of um, not necessarily taking a payment in lieu of that's going into a fund that we may or may never um, utilize very efficiently or effectively um, for affordable housing. The only other thing I wanted to say is that every single time we talk about affordable housing, and um, we talk about it in terms of um, beating our threshold, which I understand why that is, um, but philosophically, I also just want to throw out there that um, we want to be a town that has a, a rich um, cross-section of um, residents and, and development. And it's not just about beating a threshold and avoiding um, the, you know, the threat of an unfriendly 40B. It's about making our town a little bit more vibrant as well and seeing how we want, growing the way we want to grow. I thought, um, for tonight, like I agree with, I don't want to remove the pro prohibition on school children. I'd like to keep that in. So I, I agree. So I'm comfortable moving forward with that. And could we have the language as such that it could be either a payment in lieu or building of other units to be discussed, uh, to be finalized before town meeting? Or can we add both of those in there and then kind of like take part well, out once we? 
so that you will decide what your motion will be between now and town meeting, but you could have all of the options in there. Well, I don't, for tonight's purposes, do that. At least we have something then. But could we have a subcommittee to discuss the options, or no? I mean, our meetings are very full. I, yeah, I just don't see the point of a subcommittee. We talk about this particular issue and every development. I think we got this one nailed. But if nobody else feels like that, okay. that we do, and we need a subcommittee, I don't want to be on it. But <laughs> you can. I did want to mention that there is a provision in the host community agreement in the the last amendment that addresses if um, if there are children in a senior housing development, there are payments to be made. Um, so if if the prohibition on children was removed, there would be uh, payments made in the amount of $9,000 per excess pupil per year, prorated on the academic year until the number of students is reduced to three or fewer. And who pays that? The developer. The developer. So, so per year, so. So, yeah, that's yeah, the so there's, 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 there's 10 years there's from now, there's, than, there's, so there's more than three in a senior housing development, then this kicks in until that number goes below three. And who's verifying that? I, 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 but, but I guess where, where my concern is is that we have, I mean, how do we enforce that? Because, I mean, unless it's just on the goodwill of the developer, whereas I'd, I'd rather actually have the association liable for that. Is reporting to the town so the town would know how many school children are living in the development? I, I know that we can count the number of students, but with regards to the developer actually paying that, if the developer, you know, goes bankrupt, then we have no ability to well, the town would sue the association. I want to show I haven't seen the documents. I'm assuming they have a, the prospect of a lien to get the payment. Yeah, I thought the condo association okay. Right. Okay. It's it's no different than not maintaining a drainage system. The town can get a lien against it. Too. If I could, when this goes to town meeting, assuming it passes, the nobody can hear you at home. Assuming this passes a town meeting, this I discussed this with some of the selectmen. The selectmen will also have to change the host community agreement because that'll be in direct, direct violation of the law. Depending on what change is voted on the yes. H. Yes, on the H issue. So, I mean, I'm open. I'm kind of brain fried right now. I'll take some more comments, but I would be open to language that we could put in that gives us some flexibility. I, I just have a question with regards to Sanctuary Lane, which is that situation <coughs> where one resident has to be over 55. Mm -hmm. How many children are in that development? I don't know. And is, we can't know. We can't know. My, my concern is we've talked about um, affordable housing. We've talked about the fact that we don't want a section in town that's affordable housing. We've talked about that we'd like it interspersed with our regular housing. The Legacy Farms property went through the whole thing with it's going to be this percentage affordable. And the way I'm seeing is it is, I'm sorry, it's a marketing issue for you because you've sold it as there won't be any children in this development. But from my perspective, the whole development was based on it's going to be this mix and you were allowed the over 55 housing under that same condition. And I personally am reluctant to change my mind on taking away the affordable component because it's, it's a marketing thing. If I may. Um, I don't dispute that, the concept. We, we regret that 100%. And, and, and that's, you know, we, we took the bylaw, we took the decisions which the town gave us and went out in good faith, and, and that's the way it's developed. And, and I don't think you can leave us a position to say, you're telling us on one hand, you have to have the affordable housing there, okay? But then you're telling us on the other hand, it doesn't comply with the law. So we're being told, we've got to take out the, the 18, but yet that's what your decision, that's what your bylaw says that's applicable to this property. So you can't on one hand tell us you have to have the affordable housing there and then go back on your own bylaw and your own permit that we relied upon in good faith and got financing and got mortgage and got approval of a master deed and say, sorry, what do you do? If we put the affordable housing in there, we have to have the restriction at this stage of the game. 
I think that's the, the, if I can, the central uh, conundrum here is that we're all facing a situation that you know doesn't have a neat solution, um, and and nobody has acted outside of good faith, right? So we just we we simply have to put forward a solution, whether we love it or not. Um, and I think that I'm very inclined to um, to substantiate. Um, you know, our part of the agreement, and, and I recognize from a business perspective that that changing the age restriction is a is a huge problem for the, for the developer, um, and frankly, it's a huge issue for the town, right? Sure. So I I want to swim with this from both both sides. We we don't want to create a problem for ourselves, um, and uh, and. Then I would say, you know, in good faith and keeping with the fact that we all recognize all of us are in a tough bind, that the developer then be flexible and work with us to, um, to, you know, craft a solution towards the affordable housing question that is potentially a little bit elegant and um, and workable and in keeping with what we would eventually like to see for the town of Hopkinton, and that is with affordable housing sort of less segregated and more and less visible and more integrated and in keeping with right. so I'm going to ask Mary is there language or Elaine is there language that we can put together because we're just going around in circles on this right now can I sure Katie quickly come on up just state your name and oh uh, yeah yeah because oh, I've been raising my hand and oh. no on this particular topic I just saw it so please come on up So um, I, I support the affordable housing, and um, I understand what they say, that, that this would cause their business plan to change a little bit. But um, the, from what I've observed with the market and the sales, I don't think there was going to be any shortage of buyers. Um, the, what, what I've seen is that is legacy farms <coughs> can't fill them fast enough. That they're sold before they're they're done, you know. So, I think the market, um, you know, granted it would be a, a a different type of a mix or whatever, but um, I think it's probably something that that I mean, you couldn't have a better climate than you have right now for the demand for people to move to Hopkinton. So, um, I I think that giving up the affordable housing is if, if you give it up now, I think it's going to be very difficult to get it back. I think, um, you know, 200 some odd thousand dollars is not going to buy a house in Hopkinton for anybody. Um, so if you have them make that payment, that's not going to work. And um, I, you know, like I say, having a committee try to build, a de you know, a, a development would just be a disaster. So, um, you know, I, I think the affordable housing, you know, I think it should stay, and you know, I think they could make the adjustment. Thank you, Mary. There's um, there's wording here that was amended by town council that I can read. Um, this is this is option two, which I. Um, but I'll I'll read them both. I just this one made more sense at the moment. <laughs> okay, to see if the town will uh, vote to amend Article. 26 <laughs> of the zoning bylaw by inserting a new paragraph at the end of section 210-167C affordable housing as follows. An applicant may contribute funds to the Town of Hopkinton Affordable Housing Trust Fund to be used for the development or creation of affordable housing in lieu of constructing and offering the dwelling units required by that section. For each affordable housing dwelling unit not constructed or provided, the fee shall be an amount equal to and this is the three-bedroom home section, you know, because that's that's how it's worded. Um, that is affordable to um, a qualified affordable housing unit purchaser. I'm just going to skip ahead. Okay, and payments shall be made according to a schedule agreed upon by the planning board and the applicant. So it doesn't, you know, necessarily give all the details, it, it, but it says that okay, yes, they're voting on this, and then planning board will go forward with some of these details with the schedule. And then option one, 
essentially would involve deleting the affordable housing subsection C um, in its entirety. And then um, the first section would then read, except as otherwise provided in the following paragraph of this section, not fewer than 60 dwelling units. I don't know if that's revised since then, but within the Osma district shall be affordable housing, which shall be located, okay, that's, that's the existing wording and that will, would stay in there, okay, so, and deleting the phrase, in addition to the affordable housing requirements provided in subsection C of this section in its entirety, saying that notwithstanding the foregoing, if prior to the issuance of building permit for development project that contains affordable housing is no longer in effect or the rules, regulations, and guidelines of the Massachusetts uh, Community Housing and Com Housing and Community Development no longer provide that all the units in the rental unit that contains at least 25% affordable housing units. Okay, this is not making sense to me. So, so, so. I'm sorry. <laughs> we can work with town council to, to word the articles to provide the full range of mm -hmm. options. The board can let them go ahead as they are without a recommendation. That's one option. Okay, let's, I'll, I'll, I'll take that idea right now because it's probably the best one I've heard. Roy, come on up. Yeah, I'm not kidding. I kind of hear what we got. It's a little confusing, but that article you were reading has to do with the 240 apartments. There are 60 affordable units there. So that's why it's confusing. Okay. okay. Thank you. So, I don't you know. I like to the planning board members. I like Elaine's suggestion of having town council put in the, the options available. We can take that <coughs> to town meeting and allow the discussion to occur at that point. Because it doesn't seem like there's I a lot of consensus. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't listening. Can you say that one more time? I apologize. Sure. Elaine's proposed that um, she'll work with town council to put language that covers all of the different options, and that's what we can put on town uh, at the town meeting and have the discussion and decision made at that point. And we can refine the motion in, in the interim if we come up with right. something that well, if we come up with the recommendation that yeah. we can as long as it's within the scope of that's that. more that's right. more targeted so what i really like about that is it makes it it brings public and it brings round to town meeting this conversation which we are all struggling with which i think it's very important for people to hear um i think um that it, it's a conundrum that all towns are going through and I, and, um, I do like the idea of, of, of working with the, the language and working with town council to try to find, you know, the appropriate staging um, because I don't think there is an easy answer. Um, but I think creativity, I think we could get creative, um, but it has to be, it has to be in, with the proper language and uh, with the approval of town council. So, so how would that work at town meeting? I'm sorry. So, I also ahead, think yeah. that we have to ask Carol's question about the overall number of affordable housing in the Osmond. I think that is something that... Well, in the town in general, right? Because no, we, we know it's no. the Osmond. Right? I mean, if we're making this change within the Osmond, I think we need to know that we aren't, we aren't creating another legal issue because the Osmond mandates a certain percentage. Right, but that's that, that would be that would be all set because we already have the units at the uh, apartment uh, complex. They all count. So these numbers, we would just go back to the previous language before. So it depends on what what you vote. But if if someone were to remove the affordable housing requirement, it would just go back to the way it was before the senior housing was part of that. So we would still keep the exist the existing affordable. The senior housing was a was part of the original Osmond, right. correct? It, would, it came later. This was a modification it, to that. Yes, but it's a two-thirds town meeting vote that made this modification that mandated the affordable housing. At the 18. Edition. Well, there already was an affordable housing requirement before this. Can we just ask town council that question to make sure that we're not monkeying with the, we're not, we're sure. not creating another problem we'll take to the, a future town meeting? Sure. Got it. So, sure. 
To clarify, when we get to town meeting, will we be recommending one option or the other? We'll make a motion for one or the other, correct? I think, well, I think we should, otherwise it's going to be yeah, I don't I, I think, one, right? I'm just worried they're going around in circles at town meeting, too. If yeah, exactly. right. so I heard, to that would be very difficult for Muriel, trust me. Um, Unless I'm sick and then <laughs> <laughs> No, no. I took my lumps last year. <laughs> oh, yeah, you did. And as far as... As far as getting creative, we are limited to, you know, what zoning changes were advertised and yes. know, what's going to be in the warrant, so we have to stay within, within yes. the school. Sure. Mm -hmm. right. okay. So do we need to make any type of motion this evening, or sure. I think we do need to make some motion to develop like to, Good to have language. some guidance going forward. Can, can I ask a point of clarity? Sorry, I know it's sure. late, but Elaine, you mentioned that there's already a payment model in this. In the host community agreement. In the host community agreement. It's in the zoning bylaw, we already have a payment in lieu allowed for the flexible community <laughs> development bylaw. Yes, and is that the same the same agreement that covers all of Legacy Farms, or is that a, a separate agreement for this particular development within Legacy Farms? So the flexible community development applies to everything that's not Legacy Farms, and that requires one unit for every ten. So. In legacy, we wanted to keep the same percentage, but so they have their own requirement in their own um, zoning bylaw. Yes, which is which is the one-time fee when they go above 350 students, and then so much per each additional. So that's the host community. That's fee. So that's not okay. the zoning. Sorry. Yeah. So will we get another look at this in two weeks? Or? Yeah. yeah. Well, but I think I think what Gary is is, is alluding to is that in the language that maybe we talk about on the 22nd that we have what the formula would be for compensation for the payment in lieu of units yes. payment in lieu. Yeah. into the affordable housing trust fund it really can't go anywhere else so there um, wouldn't be payments for anything else no in the zone. Uh, right 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 but we but the formula of how that's all derived right so well, we have a formula now which mirrors what's in the bylaw so that can be modified I, I guess where I'm going is that I'm more comfortable, and I, I know this goes against what the developer's asking for, but I'm more comfortable removing the restriction on under 18 if I feel like the, if I, if it feels like the, the, the financial implications for the developer of the association are significant enough to cover the costs that the town would incur, then, then I'm, then I'm more, more comfortable there. Whereas, <coughs> like, that's just my personal opinion, but... Um. Yeah, can I make one comment? Uh, Jim Gately from Average Properties. Uh, <clears throat> we're required by our special permit to do affordable units like in proportion to the market units so that after we've pulled nine permits for market rate units, the tenth one and every tenth one would be affordable. So we're we, we have that requirement right now we have to live with. We have pulled seven permits. We're about to put in an application for two more. So we're going to be in a spot where... We can't get the tenth. We can't get a tenth yeah. market rate unit. <coughs> um, and we're out there, you know, marketing these units, and we're kind of working with something that's moving at the present time. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, from your point of the scenario, and keeping the affordable within the project, you still keep it at the, the age restricted, but they don't count towards your inventory. Correct. Claire, why don't you come forward, please? Claire, I just wanted to throw out one other conundrum. I have heard rumblings that there's a possibility that the entire concept of over 55 may be challenged on the basis of age discrimination. I don't know where this stands. Um, I don't know if that were to happen, whether an existing development would be grandfathered or whether they would be required to comply with any discrimination laws. But one thing that does worry me is if we go through the steps of exempting, making these exemptions, the day could come in the not too distant future when the whole place is opened up <coughs> for anybody. or under anyway. So that's a concern. Yeah, I guess we can't solve that though. Yeah, we can't. <laughs> a lot of towns are in trouble at that stage. Yeah. We can so somewhat solve that with an additional payment from the developer of the con association for the school kids. So mm -hmm. 
I don't know if that's legal either. That might be a whole other. That's what that's worms, that's right. worms. I totally do that. Um, <laughs> all right. So just to kind of, if we can try to close the loop on this one. Yeah. So I just, just. I'm just going to throw out what my understanding of what we're hoping to do to keep the language open. Yeah. So, and then people can shoot me down. Um, we are uh, making a proposal to maintain the age restriction and not allow children under 18 um, and make some provision for the affordable units that will not be there now because you can't have both, right. both things. Um, to either have a payment in lieu of that or construction of units somewhere else in town. Correct. Mm -hmm. That satisfy the affordable structures. So does that's what I that's what I would like to see happen. Well, are you moving that? I am. Second. I don't know about the off site. We'll have to see if that's within the four corners of the Can I just ask a question okay. that will probably get me laughed out of the room? Hold on, no? hold on, just for <laughs> process, right? So that was a Moved and second. motion. Second discussion. discussion yeah. Your point. I want to know if Roy has another 18 properties laying around that he wants to turn over to affordable. <laughs> we, we don't. I'm concerned that you're putting a hurdle that's not going to be achievable because you're here. Yeah. Please. I'm concerned that if you put something in where having a cash payment is one thing because that's definable, one can do that, whatever that works out to be, or if you want to have no restriction on um, leaving the restriction in place, that works fine too, but if you're suggesting that you have to build affordable off-site somewhere, who knows where the site is? Who knows if you ever get to build it? In the meantime, are you going to allow all 180 units to get built and have some money put in the fund? I think it really complicates the matter. I think it'd be much easier to agree on a dollar amount and have that paid into the trust fund. I'll just uh, follow up to that. I think that that is the hurdle that we have heard before, and it it is in indeed a conundrum that we can understand um, but it's it's not it's not our problem to solve and it's solvable I just wanted to note that the board is concerned about growth and when you talk about making yeah. payments to build more units there's going to be more units or, ma or building be more, more units family or, housing or building more units affordable units right and there's uh, going to be a lot more children in those 100 percent Right. You push on one piece and another piece. I, <laughs> so I, 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 I echo Mar Mariel's comment. Um, I do think it is uh, the developer to solve that issue. It's too easy just to kind of put money into the pot. I think you just write a check and it's gone. I'd rather have them have skin in the game. They know how to build the units, find a place in town, either on their facility or somewhere else to build it. That's where we're going. We made, uh, we made the Chamberlain Whalen developer do that. Fine. It was two units, though, right? It doesn't matter the number. It's the same percentage. So, any more discussion? I like it. Sure. All right. Now, we're in place. Ready to vote? All those in favor, signify by. Oh. I thought you were going to vote next week. Uh, yeah, this is just to have the language to, to, to be able to put it in. Yeah, we're going to refine it. Really. Trust me, it's got more work. Can we have a motion that they reduce the number of units by the number of places that we have to build elsewhere? To make up for I just made my head explode. Could you say that again? <laughs> <laughs> Can we have an option that they have to reduce the number of units they are building so that we can build the number of units we have to to get the 10% elsewhere? Does that make sense? Yes. It's kind of a wash, right? It does. Well, if, if they have to provide 18 units, right. then what I'm saying is that their development should contain 18 less units if we have to put 18 units elsewhere. Well, they'd have to do that in order to get the ratio, right? Is that the four corners, though? Uh, <coughs> my, excuse me. My, my concern with that is it's kind of double jeopardy. Um, you know, the middle units are not worth as much as the end units, number one. And number two, it's one thing to build them on a site you already own. And you, know, if you have your roads, you have your infrastructure, you have everything in place. And you're basically just filling in the middle units. But now all of a sudden, if you've got to go out and buy another piece of land, zoning and permitting and infrastructure and roads, I mean, it's going to be a lot more expensive than doing it this way. So I think that would really be. And if you can't simple. build 180, now you get double whammy. That's a financial issue you guys needed to consider coming in. Yeah, I'm happy to meet with really? council. I mean, I, I, so I, I, can, can we? Is it okay if we meet with uh, Raymond Harris and walks through some things, <laughs> reports? Representative of somebody from. So, what What is 
the next April meeting agenda look like? Uh, hearing at five, for five minutes at 7.30, then from 7.30, 5 to 9, uh, 76 Main Street, um, discuss the citizen petition for the yeah. one-year growth restriction and town meeting preparation. Yeah, so I think we have time at the next meeting to, to have a fuller discussion about this. We've got the growth moratorium articles coming back. We have a bunch of things that we didn't sure. get to. Sure. Um, and so, and we don't have other hearings there. Should we ask town council to be present? I th I definitely think idea. we need town Sorry. council for this because I feel like as we push on one piece, it, you know, it has implications in other ways. I think it would be very helpful. Yep. It's fair. All right. We'll meet with Elaine. Certainly, if a representative of the board could be there, that would I think be helpful. Yep. But we'll meet with council and. I, I don't mind supporting, if, if the board is amenable, I do not mind supporting a meeting with Elaine and the developer um, to, to try and, you know, refine this a little bit. I'm happy to do that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Discussion? I, I just thought Elaine maybe had something to add. Oh. She looked like she wanted to say something. It would be nice if there was consensus on the board, but that's okay. <laughs> well, we still have to vote because I think there is a motion on the table. Right. Second. I agree. Um, so we have multiple options coming forward. Yes. Well, are we keeping option one? Or are we, the motion was for option two, right? For the uh, leaving the restriction. I think, I think we're going to leave them on the warrant. Leave it all on now. the warrant. Leave all. The board yeah. will decide. And then we'll boil it down. The motion is for all options. So I thought I heard you asking for more, more refinement, right? Right. So I the thought motions. that's what the motion the was, to sort of <clears throat> at least limit some of the options. So the warrant will have to be set has to be signed the day after your next meeting. So for all intents and purposes, the language of the articles is going to be set. But you can work on your motions and your amendments between now and Right, but it doesn't meeting. help you if we have an option that maintains the age restic restriction and tackles the affordable housing rather than all of the options. Well, I think you would then decide which ones you're going to support and move on the floor of town meeting. Others may make other motions, but you will be deciding how you want to proceed. So all those options will be there, and anyone can make a motion. Well, that sounds like a perfect idea. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that. At this point, it's yeah, just doesn't seem great. It's chaos. Kind of Wait, I mean, what could go wrong? A thousand people would be great. Uh, do we want a further discussion on this? Or it's, it's, there's been a motion that's been seconded. Yep. I'm done discussing. <laughs> do, do we have to pull <laughs> this tonight? I think you're just giving me direction, that's yes, all. Sure. But you don't have to. I mean, we already have direction, though, right? Well, I'm not sure. I understand the consensus of whether of the, this board about whether we prefer leaving the restriction or not. I don't or, think we've come to consensus okay. on that. I but think we're, we're waiting for a little bit of discovery between okay. between like town I, council and. I know which way I'm going to go. I was just going to say so. I don't need any more discovery on that issue for myself. Right. Doesn't that help you to have direction for, about the age restriction at least? If the board is strongly in favor of one option versus another, well, can we at least just vote on my motion and find out? A straw, a straw can something? you repeat your motion? <laughs> sure. So maintain the age restriction as it exists and solve our, this is not the way it's going to be worded, and solve the affordable housing conundrum either through a payment in lieu or construction or rehabilitation of other units in town as affordable units. If you maintain the age restriction, though, there's right. No is, need is age for, restricted affordable units? There's no need for a payment in lieu of. It's one or the other. It's either maintain the age restriction or, or take a payment. No. No, no. you can, you can no, take a payment no. subject no, to it has to be an over fifty-five. They owe us. They owe us they owe yeah. affordable units. Yes. Period. Correct. Correct. You can restrict the use of the funds to an over 55 unit. Oh, I don't think we're going to. <laughs> but maybe. <laughs> Why would yeah, that do sort that? of starts to go back six. to what the state doesn't want us to but, do. So my, my, that's my proposal. If, if, it's not, if it's not supported by, by the board, I, I accept that. My proposal is that we maintain the age restriction and we solve the affordable housing. We maintain the 55 and older. And the and no the under and no 18s, no yeah. 18. Okay, okay. Yes. that is yeah. restriction. Okay. Yeah. And I, I agree. Yeah, with the age restriction as it as it stands. Great. Yes. And then we solve the affordable housing units 
a different way, either by a payment in lieu, which the developer prefers, or construction or rehabilitation of units, which I prefer, but that's a subject for another day. Okay. All right. So is everybody clear on the motion now? Yes. That's yes. been seconded. Further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? All aye. those abstain? Nay. All right. We got one opposition. Thank you. Yep. All right, we have one, I think we have one left. Mary, correct me if I'm wrong. This yeah. is the Osmond Overlay District Living Managers at Assistant Living Facility. Yes, and um, revised language from um, Town Council. Not more than two on-site apartments that provide permanent live-in residence for on-site staff members employed in a full-time capacity of a continuing care retirement community or assisted living facility Shall be, doing to, shall be deemed a dwelling unit for the purposes of this intensity of use limitation. Okay? So, the background of that is that um, initially, on-site apartments at assisted living facilities, particularly, what's it called, Fairview? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Fairview, Fairview. Fairview. particularly Fairview um, in this instance. Um, in order not to include those as dwelling units, considered as dwelling units, they didn't put full kitchens in there. And they're finding it very difficult to hire people to be on-site personnel living in those units because they don't have kitchens. All right? And now the current owner is petitioning to um, create those apartments or, you know, modify the apartments to give them full kitchens. And we basically, in order for the whole intensity of use limitation on, um, I believe, all of Legacy Farms, um, we have to make this change if we're going to allow that. This was supported by Zach. It was supported by Zach. All right. Discussion? So I, I think that um, we're backed into a corner, and I'm a little frustrated by that. Um, and so I want them to be able to populate the <coughs> development with folks that will run it, right, and can, can live there and happily live there. Um, but we, everybody could have seen this coming, okay. right? Yeah. And I feel like we made an allowance for them to increase their density when we should not have. I guess I just want to know what's, what's specific. I, I, I see 100% what's in it for the developer. Like, it's a total win. What's in it for the town? What, it, what you know, what, what do we get in return for this? Because so, so I echo that sentiment. This is a staffing issue, and there's a lot of ways to solve the staffing issue. You can pay your people more. You can offer them more benefits. I, I, I don't know if it's a requirement they have people living on site. Um, I think this is a convenience for the developer, and I agree with Muriel. I, I don't. This doesn't feel like something that that we should be obligated to push forward um, to town meeting to address a financial or staffing issue um, for. A, that's my take. Okay. Do you have a... Just a, a detailed point that that nice that Ray provided. Yes. I believe the word not was omitted. I think it's supposed to read shall not be deemed a dwelling unit. Right. If it word. goes forward, we'll... If it goes forward, that's the intention. If it goes forward. Right. Yes. Right. Not. That is the intention. Yes. Yeah. Wait, so these would Shall not be deemed... Yes. Um, yeah. That was the intention. They won't be counted as dwelling units towards our right because right. they have not kind of dwelling units, units and they didn't put kitchens in, so it wouldn't be a dwelling unit, and now it's going to be a dwelling. Well, unit. they don't have a maximum, but Legacy Farms has a maximum. Yes. Okay. Right. Okay. So they, right. they're not All subject to the, it's the layers. <laughs> it's the onion we're peeling. So, Roy, did you have a comment? Actually, the senior living is a, is a by right use. It wasn't any, any expansion. And it specifically was permitted without the kitchen, so it didn't violate the rules. I'm, I'm not the one asking for this. 
It's, uh, I believe, the current owners. Yeah. And so I, I, I really have no opinion on the matter. Got it. I see the Zach supported at 8 to 0. Um, let's see. About how many units is it? Do we know? Like two. 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 Yeah, two. Two. We're talking about two. two. No more than two. Two on-site apartments. That seems negligible to me. I think I'm, I'm okay with going forward with it. I kind of fall in Gary's and Muriel's camp here a little bit. This is a business issue. And, I am, yeah. um, you know, there's all the ways to be able to solve for this. I mean, yes, it would be nice to have somebody there in their own kitchen, but they can probably look at other uh, means with which to address their staffing. Full stop. Just one other comment to make, too. Yeah. We're already moving a lot of zoning changes forward to town meeting, and, and to me, this, just, this one just doesn't seem like a big priority for us to tell. We've got some other big stuff here, and just based on even last year's experience with a lot of them, I think it... It, it waters it just less is more yeah less is more thank you all right so i'll entertain a motion to support the uh the osmond overlay district living managers assisted living facility i will move it in the affirmative second all right it's been moved and seconded further discussion all right all those in favor signify by saying aye aye oh i got one all those opposed nay, nay. any abstentions Are we done with that? Is since, there anything else? Since you sponsored the article, do you want to remove it from the warrant? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I do too. Right. Yeah. yeah. Then that would be another vote. So yeah. moved. Second. second. Um, so moved and seconded. Further discussion? And I'll open this up also to the public. For whatever reason. Feedback. And just to be clear, what is being moved is to remove it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. All right, for the discussion, any? All right, all those in favor to remove it from the warrant signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? All those abstained? So, so, so done. Elaine, is there anything else? What is that Close couple of numbers? Public hearing? Down until like Close the public hearing? Ah, yes, yeah, so I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Yes, it's for talking. Second. <laughs> Are we continuing it? Public hearing? So uh, the board is th this, this public hearing. Let's That's right. Don't worry. We're not going to, we're not shutting it all down. Uh, you guys waited a long time. Uh, so I think Elaine mentioned closure of the public hearing for, for the, the article. Zoning articles. For the zoning, so zoning articles. Zoning. But if so we're well, talking about the Osmod and the payment in lieu of, at another is that day. not? Yeah. It doesn't have to be at a public hearing. Okay. Oh. okay. Then so moved. Second. Second. I moved. Thank you. I'm sorry. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, Don't worry. Uh, it's been moved and seconded. All the uh, discussion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. All right. Very good. That is closed. Next on the list. Box Mill. Box Mill Road. Mr. Barbieri. Oh, uh, yes, we will do Wilson Street. But I think next I saw, we'll get to it, Katie. If we, I mean, I don't know what's going to be quicker. Uh, you know what? Why don't we just follow the right rationale? Katie Towner, Wilson Street Drainage, Bio Detention Basin, Toronto. We'll go right order. Okay, so um, this is in reference to um, a decision that the board rendered last fall to um, reconstruct the biotension basin on Wilson Street. So um, those were plans that were presented and um, it, was, it was the result of a, um, a hearing that, that um, lasted, I don't know, a couple of months or whatever. It, was going all the way back to the summer. Um, there was a lot of discussion involved. Um, there was a lot of issues um, involved, uh, complicated issues, and the plans were approved finally. And um, then um, with the promise that they were going to be constructed in November, um, nothing happened. 
So I made a public request for information, and what I found is that shortly after the plans had been approved, the developer had gone back and sought an administrative change to significantly um, degrade the, the function of the, the reconstruction. So it effectively nulled the, you know, the, the agreement. So after all of these, you know, we'll get to it, we'll get to it, we promise, we'll do it, we'll do it, and months and months and months, um, they just came around, you know, through the back door and just, just said, well, um, uh, there's no reason for this, let's not do it. So the, the, the um, and what disturbed me the most is that, is that the, um, the rationale for changing the plans was that um, there was no water quality issue. So the emails, I, I requested all of the emails and the, the this, this request to change the plans went through like five levels of designers. It went through multiple telephone conversations. And, and they kept saying, why, why, why? Why are we doing this? And there was no explanation. There was no, they had no background. They weren't part of any of the hearings or anything. And, um, you know, you guys have a rule that you're not allowed to vote on something unless you've heard the whole story. So. What happened here is that the um, uh, one person, I don't know why they asked, but they said, well, why, you know, uh, there's no water quality issue here. Why, why are we building this? Let's, let's, um, let's, um, and look, look how much it costs, you know. So let's, let's change the plans and let's remove the cost element, and in this case, in this case, the cost element was the, the amount of what they call bioretention soil. So if you recall, the problem with this, this um, drainage structure is that <clears throat> the, the um, soil um, was not suitable for drainage. And the stormwater reports um, that uh, was submitted um, um, used incorrect um, drainage of inches per hour. It was off by a factor of, I don't know, two or something. It said it would drain at two inches per hour, and, and then Beta came back and, and, and had to analyze it and write a memo, and it was much less than that. So that was the whole purpose that it was reconstructed, is because the the original analyses were, were way off, and, and there was never any acknowledgement as to why they were way off, um, just other than proper engineering wasn't done. So the, 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 the um, it was finally resolved, and Beta came up with, they came up with the design where they would, um, construct this basin, it would be lined with a layer of bioretention soil so that the pollutants and the sediment would, um, would um, be trapped by this layer of bioretention soil. And then the, the water that came out from that filtering would then be discharged out the outfall. Well, yeah, that was great. That's what it was supposed to be. But um, in the, in the um, end game where they came around right after it was approved and said, well, you know, we want to cut it back and not go back to the board. We just want to do it behind the scenes. Um, there was, um, well, anyway, they, there is a water quality issue. So the, wa the water quality issue is that is that the site um, has uh, the site has existing um, issues of contamination that were not um, brought forth in the in any of the hearings. So, um, so in, in the letter I wrote, in the letter I wrote, I referenced the um, 
the report um, that, that, that was submitted to the town documenting the, the pesticide contamination of the land and the conditions that that imposed on the development. So that memo, which was, which was provided to the town and which multiple people of the public asked about during the public hearing, was not acknowledged. It was not, I don't know if any of you knew about it, but certainly the town knew about it. And certainly it was asked about in the public hearing. And none of us were, were um, given any, any real answers. And there weren't any real questions asked by the planning board. Follow-up questions, you know, is, is there an issue? So the, um, you know, I don't know how, and, and these people that, that, that approved <coughs> this change order, they didn't know anything about the, the contamination issues. So how can people make good decisions? How can people make good decisions when they don't have all of the information? So this, this document about the, the contamination of, you know, the DDT and the pesticides and all that, the dieldrin, this document that, that documents all that and, and has since been corroborated by another round of testing resulting from another incident that happened recently. There was more testing done that reconfirmed the presence of five different kinds of DDT in the soil. So, so Katie, if I could, just kind of like clarifying some things here. The developer or somebody on behalf of the developer made a change order reducing or eliminating that biode the biodegradable Bio. soil, mm -hmm. for lack of a better term. Hold on, I'll get you to it just a second, Roy. And as a result, the water that's now flowing through there has, uh, is further contaminated or contaminated. So that's kind of the broader issue, but kind of higher level, there's been changes without proper approval and oversight. Is that kind of what I'm hearing, or am I missing the point? Well, I, th there's, there's multiple points, and it's complicated. And you could take it from the point that this should not have been approved administratively so, due I'm to sorry. the complexity. Mary, I'm sorry. I, I just don't want you to repeat yourself. Um, yes, that is what I'm hearing. Okay. Okay? And that's what we're discussing tonight. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. I just this has be not clear. been constructed. So, you know, the, the way this basin works is the, the, you know, the runoff enters it. And then, um, I get it. It depending on how much bioretention soil you have, determines yeah. it. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's the, the bioretention soil, right? There, there's a gap in that bioretention soil, and <coughs> as a result, the water flowing through there is not being purified to the extent that it meets basic standards of, of purification. Through the chair? Right. And if there's, if there's right. since they've reduced the, the area of it, right. um, it greatly reduces the amount of, you know, there, there's an out. Fall right. on this structure. It's not so it gets well, I have a certain. We all get it. We all, we all think we understand. Yeah, we, get it. It. We, we, we all, I think we all understand it. it, right? So I think is the ask here to bring the developer back in front of this board to kind of have them explain why they made the changes? That would be one way to go. It should not have been administratively approved. I think we, we all understood. We, we all kind of understand. We also get beta to speak to it? And and yes, that's, that's what I was going to ask. So, yeah, thank you. Sure. Um, I, mean, I would, I, no, I, I would, I would like, here. I would like Mr. Paradise to, to um, address this because there were specific things in the emails, and I appreciate you bringing this forward, Katie, um, but there were specific things in the emails that, that, that referred to um, um, Georgia having discussed this with beta. I don't know if with you personally or with other engineers. <coughs> It's a and I so. believe that this is this is something that we they would they know that, that we rely on our, our engineers. Hold on, please. Our town engineers. We they did not have. The, they were not told. Please, we we really need to hear from our engineers. What don't your engineers need the information about the existing conditions? Let us bring up. Let us bring up. Beta. And do any of you and aware of the existing conditions? We, I've read all of the information. So, yes. 
At the time of the hearing, were you aware of those existing conditions? Can, can we speak hey, to? Hey, let us bring up other people. Our engineer. Right, Phil, come on up, and then, get some then I'm going to give you the floor as well. So, Phil, come on up. All right. So, there's a few different things going on here. Um, first of all, the uh, the size of the basin. Just a quick review of what happened. The size of the basin was sized for water quality treatment only. Um, and when they when they designed the roadway and the development for the uh, Legacy Farms Road North, they didn't do a hydraulic analysis <coughs> and match peak rates of runoff from the site. So what we asked the developer to do was to modify the basin and or come up with a solution so that we would reduce the runoff from the site. So this basin was increased in size to um, do that, mitigate the peak rate of runoff from the site. In the process, um, and this is at the end of a, 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 a the chain of runoff from the site. So there's a swale on the road that leads to other, you know, there's a couple swales and that check dams and anyway, this is the f this is the final piece before it outfall overflows to the road. Um, there is no the the only way it overflows is to fill up an overflow. So the w the the question was uh, that was presented to me at the time of this modification was the soil they can't get it they can't get the I don't know the quantity or the uh, there was some issue in terms of getting the quantity of soil they wanted to use so they were just going to lower the bottom and provide I, I forget what the final version of the the thing was. But they were increasing, they were effectively increasing the volume of the basin so it would actually hold more water. Right. So that was a, and that, the, the basin would infiltrate into the ground. So that water is going to be infiltrating into the ground and be treated <coughs> as, as, as it, as it uh, and subsequent to that, this, this, run, this runoff is primarily the road. It's not taking any, or much runoff from the from the old farm f farmland. It's it's primarily the road run runoff that's being treated here. So, the 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 issue of contamination should be minimal at this at this location. And again, it's going to be infiltrated. It's not going to be not not treated and, and it's blown out. So. Okay, I get it. I get one follow up question, but I also want to get Roy. Um, why don't you come on up and see if we can get all the size of the story here. Thank you. Pardon my voice. Um, to clarify first and foremost, this issue of contamination is false. The contamination, which was Deldrin, was detected a long time ago by uh, Haley and Aldridge. We had a complete study of the entire property done. And there was a hot spot of Deldrin which, and it wasn't done in secret, we worked very closely with the Board of Health and we identified the area, we had the soils removed, we got closure on it, we went back to the Board of Health, and by the way, this area is not anywhere near the age-restricted housing. This is actually where houses are being built now by Palti. So this is the other side of the bridge. So it's not that area at all. As far as... <clears throat> As far as we haven't built the, the uh, reten retention area yet, Bio Basin, the reason being is we were thinking about doing it last November, mm -hmm. and my contractor said he was uncomfortable leaving that raw area exposed through the winter that we may get erosion because we want to hydro seed all the edges, and it wasn't going to take that time of year. So it's our intention to do this this spring. Now, I believe you all should have gotten a letter I sent to, to I'm sorry. I just want to... I apologize for interrupting, but we did talk about it being done before the winter because the winter was a great concern. Yes. And we, you did not come back before us to let us know that that was now your intention. Then I, I should have done that. That's good point. That's true. But we didn't. Sorry about that. So, you know what? It's a safety issue out there. A, a, a quick I'm sorry to the board at this point doesn't really satisfy me. I'm just speaking for myself. Okay. I will tell you there were no issues out there this winter that I saw. Well, isn't that a blessing? I, I agree. 
But the letter you received today, because I, I brought the concerns up that I received from Elaine relative to this, this basin, and let me just read you the one highlighted line. This revised design modification provides the same level of water quality treatment, provides additional storage capacity while balancing the overall construction cost of the project. So basically what we've done is we've made the basin larger to hold more water, not less water. And we went to uh, the planning department at that time, submitted plans for discussion purposes because we felt it was a ministerial change. And then they were sent over to Phil. Phil reviewed them back and forth with VHB. We were given the go ahead for those plans. So assuming the board allows us to move forward, we'd like to get this done this spring. Chair, just a real quick question on okay. the location. Sure. So I was misunderstood. I thought it was up by Wilson Street where we always talked about this. No, is the, the, this is at Wilson Street. Oh, it is. I thought you said it was down by the... No, no. The, the, the issue of contamination, oh. you know, is like a quarter of a mile away from okay. that. It's up at uh, the Pulte site, which has been since cleaned out. Okay. So that's no longer an issue. Thank you. Katie, can you come up? Can you come, you gotta, you come up? Sweet spit, and then I'm gonna make a call here in a second, folks. Um, so, yeah. so there is no hot spot. The the way the study was done is that a um, a particular area was selected to sample because they couldn't sample the entire sure the entire parcel. So they 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 came up with the methodology. You guys you guys got the memo. Mm -hmm. They came up with a methodology. They picked an area. It was area 29 or something like that. And they did their whole study, and they concluded that, that it should be reasonably assumed that the same conditions exist on all the rest of the parcel, that that was the whole point of this was to, um, you know, that was the methodology. Sure. That it, and that's, that's in the memo. And... And since then, with this other issues that have come up, um, you know, the, the, the hauling of the, the soil off the site against the um, rules, they're not supposed to haul dirt off the site, but it did occur, and that dirt was tested, and that dirt had, you know, was contaminated. So it, it's, it's, so, I, I, I guess I guess if you don't if you don't if you allow violation after violation after violation, you're just telling you're just telling the developers to keep violating keep violating the the rules. So, so Katie, rules what would you see not, as a resolution here? What huh? would you see as what would you see as a resolution on this? I think they should build it as it was approved. We all put in the time. We all put in the effort we all attended the hearings you guys voted on the plan they ought to build it he said for months and months and months he was going to build it and and we all went through the hearings and they ought to build it the way okay. it was because because the 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 point about the bioretention soil is it is it determines the rate at which it drains right so if it doesn't drain at a certain rate then it's going to, obviously, it's going to fill up, and then it's going to spill out the outfall. I got it. I got and it. you so guys have to report on this. This, in the next census. I, I understand where you're coming from, what we're going to do. I want to do this. It's been over 20 minutes of time here. I want to ask my board members, do we want to continue this element in discussion at the next meeting or the next open space meeting? Um, what do you guys suggest? Because what I'm hearing is, um, Katie here is, is looking to us to ensure the proper administration of what we approved you know using beta as our conduit but also kind of working in conjunction with the developer and if there's any changes you know we haven't been notified of those so there's some gaps here in the communication that we need to kind of remediate on um, i'm happy to continue the discussion although i feel I'm pretty and, clear I, and I don't blame that. the land use office for 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 giving the benefit of the doubt but they didn't have all the information and the Got fact it. that that 
that this contamination issue was was you know we asked about it. So I, I, I understand, Katie. You know? Right. So and I think I, I would I would later. I would suggest that we uh, save a spot on the May thirteenth meeting. I think it's a great to idea. To have a more full discussion. Yeah. And if there is, I mean, the, 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 the um, detail around the contamination, right, just looking at the data, if it's available in a, in a public in a public way or if they have it, that would be great to be able to see the contamination pre -imposed. It was in a packet. I, was it in a packet? It was in a packet um, two times, two, two right. meetings ago. Mm -hmm. All right. So one so, suggestion I would like to make is perhaps the developer can work with Katie in the the meantime, to see if they can come up with a solution on the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I, I didn't hear what you said. Perhaps you, you and Roy could have like a site visit and, and talk it through, and just see if there could be some kind of solution outside the board. In the meantime, until we meet next. So, so. <coughs> what's that? Well, I don't know if that's going to be effective if we if we need to vote on it. And I don't think we, I'm not going to. I don't think there's anything to vote on. I think it's just. Uh, <coughs> Be able to continue put some time, it. continue it. We'll put some time on the meeting on May 13th. Yeah, I mean, time. there was this thing about cost. The, the only reason Katie, to I, I, we have to floor. Thank you very much. But we will talk May 13th. About it. Do we have any space? Yep. Uh, 30 minutes? Sure. Let's do 30 minutes. Let's just Can I try it. to help the Katie and Roy conversation? If Phil could. Um, address the issue of contamination on the site and and maybe help us with some information by that meeting um, that would be great um, as to its level and okay and, and perhaps okay. Phil could join them. Okay if, they, if they do meet perhaps Phil could join them and, and maybe evening. Phil Phil could Phil could join them too so that they could have some kind of consistency all right just a Thank suggestion. Thank you. So May 13th. Thank you very much. Thanks, Katie, for bringing it forward. Appreciate it. This means nothing's going to be built between now and then, right? I think so. Okay. It's already been so long. I didn't actually hear your question. So it's, we thought it was going to be built last fall, and now we're, and it's not built yet. We built this spring. And now it's still not going to be built. Putting May 13th. So I'm going to like set something on fire if it's not done. <laughs> <laughs> winter this next winter but yeah we, we will have to have a time so certain. we can close this out and, all right so la one of the last items not the last item but mr barbera you've been waiting patiently <laughs> i know it's past everyone's bedtime box I mill road I'm going to work after this good evening my name is richard barbera i'm the <laughs> developer of box mill road the reason i'm here tonight is during the construction of the road the house on the corner was sold and the new people that bought it sent the letter. They asked me to keep the berm where the road is actually now, which is a little bit on their property. They're going to grant an easement to me that would surpass onto the town. Basically, it just gives a little bigger radius. So that's mm -hmm. about it. Good. You waited all that time just to say that. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, well, do you have an image of... Uh, yeah, I, uh, I, do, I think there's one up on... Yeah. It's on yeah. page 211 of your packet. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. My computer. Yeah, my, my battery died. So. Um, so, so is it correct that, just a related question, you, you do have underground utilities but no sidewalks? I have underground utilities. No sidewalks, okay. the reason being was... The, at the time, they didn't get on Leonard Street. Sure. But I have like an eight foot berm and stone walls and trees. And it's pretty nice. Thank you. Okay. okay. This is the red line. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's where it would go now. Before it was going to go down to that catch basin and then turn. Yep. Is it a matter of a few feet? Yeah, it's like seven or eight feet. Is it going to affect the flow at all? Is it going to affect the flow or is it going to improve no, it? No, the water right now is going into that catch basin. Chief, any what I put in is for nothing. <laughs> any thoughts, Chief? I don't know. You if like it, it? I would think the more room, the better, right? Yeah. The only I just have one concern. Um, I would like to um, ask the opinion of DPW Director. This is an old, pre-existing catch basin that was constructed by a third party and not the town. I want to make sure that the town wants to accept responsibility for it when it dictates the roads or like public way. So I'd like to ask but does that affect the the easement part? Yeah. Okay, it does. So I'd like to ask the opinion. Of Should we do w. that before? Um, Should we make it so planning the modification? Is it kind of contingent upon? Contingent upon. We could do that. Do we want to do that, or do we do want to for? Do we for? Do we feel more comfortable waiting for? To just, hear back? just let me address that. I'm trying to put the mm -hmm. berm in next week and pave 
the fall. That, I, that's, I hear you, but you know what? That, doesn't, know. that doesn't impact us I would be all in favor of not making the gentleman come, come back. Make him come yes. back? And not a So uh, I, I would move that we can do <coughs> it on the DPW's second approval. Agreed. All right. Good discussion. So, yeah, there, we have a letter in our packet from George McBride. Is that related mm -hmm. to this? So it was a relative that put that there, I think, yeah, in the 70s. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he's just, I, I didn't fully understand why he was writing to us. Is he just objecting to, to what's happening where, or documenting where it came from? Where it came from. Okay, got it. So it's more than, he's not opposed to it necessarily. It's just, George. He's not opposed to it. It's more just documenting where. Just letting you know how it happened. Okay. Giving us okay. history. Good enough. Handwritten too. I like it. Uh, yeah, old school. Um, all right. So there is a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? All right. Um, all those in favor of granting the minor modification with the condition, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. All those abstain. Thank you for sticking around. Should have gone first. Yeah. <laughs> um, the last thing we need to do, I've been told by Elaine, is if we don't, we're going to get in big trouble. Uh, approval of the minutes. And TJ Solar decision. Have any changes? This is. This I read the, through them. Yeah, I read through. Did anybody have any changes? I think we can be have quick. I did not have any anybody changes. Anybody want to change your vote? Yeah. Uh, and it, do we need you did not want? So anybody want to change your vote? Oh. <laughs> I think we made the decision. I think it was just uh, It was just because it was finalized. Long what are we voting now? The final the final version? Yeah, just that you were going to review that you voted. Yeah. We were just going to review the decision. We were, yes. we're going to review. Okay. So, I'll entertain a, I'll a motion to accept the final review of the um, final so moved. draft. Final. Yeah. The draft. It has been seconded as well. Further discussion? Hearing none, I'll take a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 A nice job, by the way. All those opposed? Yes, thank you. All those abstained, so passes. Now the last thing we'll do. The meeting minutes. Approved minutes. I'm getting tired. Are so, you um, <laughs> Who uh, made the motion and who seconded? I think Muriel made the motion to... Mary, you just said. Well played. Well played. And I abstained. All right. You abstained? Okay. So we have some meeting minutes. Oh, because you can't vote. Yes, here. So you can postpone the executive session minutes, but you should do the. the All right. Session. We'll post the postpone the executive. Oh, nobody's left here to listen to the executive session minutes. We might as well do it. <laughs> um, the meeting, meeting on uh, February twenty fifth. So I just had yes. one correction. I'm sorry, I should have sent it to you. Yep. Page 7 at the bottom. I can't remember the section, but maybe I took a note. Yes, future agenda items. Um, I was actually at that workshop. I don't doubt that I said that I wasn't, but I, <laughs> I was at the workshop just for the purposes of the minutes. You were there? Okay. I was, yeah. I heard that you weren't. Yeah, <laughs> I was. I was. I went to the emergency room that night with the flu. I was coughing in the hospital. I read in the Hopkinton News that you were she not. She was sick, but she was there. Yeah, I was playing hurt. So she's um, not doing well. Then. Noting the it's, it's, um, it's, it's, it's the one lady. Yeah, yeah, seven. Seven. I'll show you. Yeah. Okay. So, 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 okay. So, so noting the changes. Uh, I'll move the minutes with that change. Mm -hmm. Minutes with the change. Is there a second? second. second. Gary seconds it. All those in favor of approving the minutes for February 25th, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. All those abstain. The meeting the minutes. Wait, there was another set of minutes. I'm yeah. just getting yeah, yeah, okay. uh, <laughs> oh, Everybody right here. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> uh, the meeting minutes for March t uh, 11th. Um, any changes, modifications nope. from the group? I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes as noted. So moved. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor of the minutes on March 11th, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, abstain. So passes. Elaine, are we done on the minutes, or do we need yes. it? We're done. So I know we're not doing the executive session last night, but did we receive those? No. I no. Hand you hand them out on paper. And then we read them and give them back. Okay. So you'll bring those. I'll bring yeah. them again. We should do them with the next meeting. I'll bring them again. <laughs> Just keep bringing them. Uh, final thoughts. Yes, thank you. Ms. Kramer. Um, did we make sure that we set aside time on the next meeting for the growth um, discussion? We, we have talked citizens about petition. Is this is one thing, but also having a more
complete, complex discussion about tackling growth from all the stakeholders' angles. Can that we comes after the 495 discussion, right? I, 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 think, think, we I think we may want to tackle somebody. the article at, as we rewrote it and formulate I think it. I want to have that discussion, actually, so yeah, I'll just go ahead and say what I think. Right? Yeah. I think it's a sep two separate things, to be yeah. honest with you. Okay. I would suggest meeting earlier in the evening. <laughs> To okay. do, do that, perhaps at seven, to have that half hour. Is uh, okay. Is that anybody amenable to have a meeting at seven? Uh, sure. Yes. Sure. Okay. Let's do it. Awesome. Perfect. Perfect. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Um, and then um, I have a, a very burning issue. Everybody needs to check their social calendars. Uh oh. I would like to schedule and post a social event so we can say thank you and goodbye to two leaving members. Who we will desperately miss. So between you know now and town meeting, I would like to just uh, the board to be able to go out and uh, tie one on. Yeah, tie one on. Maybe not. Maybe not exactly that. But yes, <laughs> yes. So if, if, shoot me, shoot me dates or shoot Elaine dates, and we'll try and figure out um, a time. Sure. I love it. Hope we didn't take minutes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't like how you want to so this is this is important. This is important. That's you are right. totally invited and we will assign someone else to That's take right. those minutes. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I move to adjourn. Second. All right, all those in favor. Aye. 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 All right, thanks everybody. So this is the longest This is the longest meeting we've ever had. No.